Chi. We're doing another special here for you right after that uh, wonderful run by Kaguya Nikki. We are doing a, I'm, I'm theming it like a world record recap. Um, KBM, our runner to this evening, is a uh, fantastic Kingdom Hearts 2 speedrunner who just got world record in, hold on, the category name's really long, Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix HD Critical Level 1 Any% percent for the PS5. I think that's and, it. <laughs> Sounds right. And uh, it's going to be doing a run to kind of to celebrate that and highlight that run. The only main difference is we're running on the PC modded version, which basically just cuts out the gummy skips, so it's a little bit better for the broadcast. Um, so I think we're just going to get right into it. And everybody, please welcome, uh, now also Dr. KVM, congrats on passing your PhD defense as well. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, KVM, take it away. Yeah, hey everybody, I'm KVM. This is level one. I've uh, really put my heart into this category over the last few years. So it's, it's a treat and an honor to be able to show it all, or to show it to all of you. On commentary here, I've got the legendary BizKid047, who really pioneered playing this game on level one. Say hi to the people, Biz. Hey, everyone. And I've got my good friend, Big Sid, who uh, we worked together to really revolutionize this category over the last few years. You, it's hard to find a strat in the run right now that doesn't have our fingerprints on it. So I love you, Sid. Say hi to everybody. Uh, love you too, KVM. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Anytime, man. All right. I think we're ready to get into it. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. You're actually ready for the countdown? Yeah. Do you want me to count it down? No, I'll count it down for you. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. All right. All right. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. Let's go. I'm going to mess up this first cutscene skip because I don't have a timer. No, you're not. Okay. I got it. <laughs> I usually. All right. We're on oh, the safe. All right. Because we usually uh, base that skip on the timer. Because the screen is just black. So, I guess I'll give a little rundown of what's going on right now. Uh, we have to get through what we call rocks this world right now to be able to play as Sora. Uh, casually, you know, a couple hours with lots of cutscenes uh, in a speed run, you know, 13, 15 minutes, depending on what version you're playing. Yeah, so I guess I'll pretty much explain. Right now, we had three options on what weapon we can pick. Right. And we really want to be utilizing strength. Even though we're playing on level one, the strength that we pick at the start is going to affect us for about the first 20 to 30 minutes of the run. And so just having the strength is going to allow us to kill fights faster and set up how this game works is a lot of enemies, we can kind of, for the beginning of the game, keep the RNG in check. By starting on a fresh file, we do certain combos for the first about three minutes of the run. And so that way, we should have no surprises. And we're going to be able to... That's being able to be done by picking the strength at the start as well. Right, and it's worth pointing out that this defense and magic do would do nothing. There's really no benefit to them on level one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's our first uh, intentional death abuse. We're going to be doing that a handful of times in the run. Uh, here you're going to start seeing uh, KBM do a bunch of air combos. And uh, if you're not aware, trying to do air combos with Roxas is incredibly difficult because he falls as if he has cement shoes on. So it's much more difficult than Sora. So it actually does take a lot of effort to efficiently and optimally do air combos with Roxas. Right, and the RNG at this point is controlled by the number of actions that the enemies take. And so it was important to not let that Dusk take any actions, right? Yes. So in, that's also a good thing you pointed that out, because even with the air combos, if you don't do air combos, the, the Dusk that KBM just fought earlier would have had enough time to recover and had the chance to even just start an action. Whether it really got to do it, as long as they even try to start it, that's enough to advance RNG and kind of throw things off. So he was able to do mail delivery once to progress the story. Normally you might think you have to do more, but doing it under a certain time requirement gives you enough money for Hainer to be happy and then progress the story. <laughs> also, I guess we'll mention uh, critical mode in general a little bit more. Um, so critical mode is obviously the hardest difficulty and level one is only achievable because you can equip EXP zero before we start actually gaining EXP. And on critical mode, uh, we actually will deal more damage than uh, proud and standard. But we, we, we take a lot of damage in two still, and we have less HP upgrades. So it does end up being a challenging run, and especially at level one, where we get points where we can get one-shotted by quite a few attacks. These weapons here, uh, you want to talk about those, Sid? Uh, I'll let you get that. I got to do this fight. Okay. <laughs> so pretty much the weapons that we 
that we had the uh, choice to choose on what we wanted to pick there. They they are designed to level up, or the, they're the path of your levels that you get, or the abilities you get when you level up. But because we're playing on level one, none of that really matters. So I was a little hesitant to really mention it. However, we just picked the sword because it's the closest to us. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Other categories do have certain things that you might want to choose. Most categories really typically still want to just choose a sword because it typically is the fastest. However, some people, depending on how you want to play and what strats you're comfortable with, uh, picking the shield can still be useful in certain categories. But for the most part, we almost always pick sword. We talked about no so experience. We, yeah, what were those other abilities? Yeah, so we had a bunch of other starting abilities. You notice he didn't equip the lucky luckies because we don't really have a use for those. It would only affect uh, one possible drop in a fight expensive. and then we would have to take it off. They are expensive, yeah. We have other abilities that help out a lot, like reaction uh, boost, so that our reaction commands will do more damage. We have draw and, uh, like, blanking on the other Sid. MP Hystera? Uh, yes. Area recovery Hystera. scan? No, not scan, actually. Uh, it's... Well, we don't know we this game. Always get area it's, <laughs> I've only seen them 10,000 the times. It's draw to Lucky Luckies, MP Hystera, and no experience. Needless to say, they help a lot, especially in the fight after this. But I guess we'll talk a little bit about Twi uh, Twilight Thorn. This is the first boss, and it is a tutorial boss, but on critical mode, it actually is quite dangerous. Uh, you can die pretty easily in this fight. But KBM's, uh, this part's all automated, where it's all based on time. And then afterwards, he's going to do a specific uh, set of combos and positioning into more combos to try to be able to uh, knock creepers away. And then if all goes well, uh, he can actually kill it without taking any damage, hopefully. Yep. And one of those abilities that's going to help him that we actually forgot to mention is finishing plus. Right. Which actually gives you the option to do a second finisher. So the normal attack path for this game is attack, attack, into finisher. You can get some abilities that can extend the amount of attacks you get before you actually do a finisher. But typically finishers do more damage, technically add more RV, which we'll get into later. Um, but allowing, having the option to do two finishers is actually really important. That was a very clean fight, Good KBM. Fight, yep. And it's just because this game is kind of specific. It's very unique in, in terms of all the series, is that in this game, you can only kill bosses with a finisher and anything that'll act as a finisher. And we can get more into that later as well, but something to point out. When, do you, when can you get finishing plus from leveling up? It's pretty late, right? Um, depends on the route. Yeah, it depends on what weapon you pick. But I believe the first one you would originally get is like level 47. The... Yeah, so it's a huge boost to the early game. Otherwise, you gotta get it from Rumbling Rose, which is uh, Beast Castle 2. Yeah, which we haven't gotten to that point yet, but in this game, the different Keyblades and weapons that you get even your party, uh, I'm not even sure about party members, some weapons. But for the Keyblades that you get, they all come with a certain ability. And for level one, because our stats don't really matter, we're really going to be wanting to take advantage of the best abilities that we can get. That's one of my favorite things about level one, is that you don't, the raw numbers don't pick your Keyblades. It's more strategic picking the abilities that are the best for the situation. So right now we're doing what we call the struggle fights and um, as you can see it's pretty straightforward you're just beating them up and grabbing the orbs having that draw ability from critical mode to start with is a big deal there as opposed to <laughs> other categories where it actually takes a lot longer to get all the orbs but yeah they're pretty simple if the strat works correctly there's not much else to say there and then we got a little normal dust fight here into another little mini boss yeah so okay. these <laughs> enemies that we're fighting they like to... It's hard to fight them as a group if you're trying to like take care of them all at the same time because especially up until this point, we're going to get it soon, but we don't have an ability to actually see their HP. This game doesn't give you the option to always see the enemy's HP. You actually have to equip an ability called Scan, which maybe I'm just got the choice of getting right now. Um, we'll see that later where we're actually going to be able to see the enemy's HP. But everything up until this point in the beginning, you kind of just have to be taking mental notes on how many hits you've done to the enemies. And if they got hit by a finisher and 
Yada yada yada. What happens if you win this fight? Uh, I you don't know. Get... I've never won. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was so prepared for that. <laughs> that was a serious question, though. Uh, uh, to... You get explained it, Biz. <laughs> You get the champion belt, which is worse than the medal for losing for our speed run, because we get we actually get uh, something that increases our strength. Like we mentioned earlier, even like one stat boost early on makes a difference to speed things up. So we actually do want to lose there, even though we could win relatively fast still. Right, even on beginner, where it takes forever for him to beat you, <laughs> it's still worth it to lose. All right, All right so, so it's go a ahead. little like. Uh, I guess customizing that KBM just did there. Uh, you just want to equip more potions in this game. Uh, you can actually set your items to auto reload. So what he pretty much did there is he just said that anytime he uses a potion, as long as he has another potion in his inventory, at the end of the battle, it's going to automatically be put back on to his main character. And at most, he's always going to have two. And he's going to save that last slot for an ether when he gets that later on. We got the fun VV clones next. Uh, they all get one-shotted, but their spawning after the first three is random, so KBM's going to try his best to catch them while he's in the air so he can buffer another jump into more air hits. And so, what, the one thing that really makes this fight hard is there's a lot of enemies, even though they die in one hit, but what's worse than the actual VVs that you're having to fight is the auto-target that you're having to fight. Because yeah. <laughs> there's so many enemies, and the auto target will just keep jumping around. And there are little things, like little tricks and tips that you can use to try to influence where your auto target's going. And that is part of the reason why jumping is better. Because every time you jump, you're actually technically resetting your auto target to want to go to the target that's closer to you, or that you're going towards. However, it's not a. Well, it's not an exact target. science. <laughs> it's not yeah. a solved problem. <laughs> Just pretty standard air combos. It's pretty hard actually to land these air it combos is on the It's actually one of the hardest fights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because typically, it, so KB made that fight look simple, but especially as playing as Roxas and not as much as Sora, but mostly it does play an effect, but you really, in some cases, you really need to learn to time your air combos so the actual swing that happens will actually connect with the enemy's hitbox. It's very easy for when you jump, you do a downward swing, and then you do an uphand swing. The uphand swing will actually typically miss the enemy if you swing too early. But then you also fall really fast. So you have to make sure you don't do it too late, but you can actually get your finisher out that staggers. Or how incredibly so well designed simple. this game is. Whiffing is yeah. surprisingly common and very frustrating. <laughs> Fun fact, uh, there is a soft lock and a crash that technically exists on this bag minigame. On every version <laughs> of Kingdom Hearts 2. It's on PS2. Which is on every oh, wow. version of Kingdom Hearts I think Hearts one, one of the, there's a soft lock and a crash, and one of them does exist on PS2. Yes. Outstanding. <laughs> it happens everywhere. But Funny, I think it's cause... player influence somehow, like mashing or uh, holding directions or something, because I, it doesn't happen very often, if at all, really. <laughs> it does not happen very often, that is true. But I will say, I think I've had it happen to me a total of three times, and two out of the three times was when I was not looking at my screen, so I cannot even tell what I did to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. These skateboards are really nice. A new addition to the series in Cage 2. Yes, and I think they're only... And <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah. You get to yeah. cartwheel spam in BBS. Flow motion is pretty fun, though. I'm not going to lie. That is. Flow motion helps with the slow movement, because as you can see, there's going to be a lot of kind of running around for a while like this, where we we get like little buffs to speed here and there, depending on where we are and who we're playing as. But uh, otherwise, the skateboards make a big difference in Roxas' world. Yeah. All right, we're almost... We're almost out of the best part of the game. I'm kind of sad already. It's a pretty tricky death abuse. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know what? That's actually... Oh. <laughs> so, on every other difficulty or category, I should say, you typically want to win that fight because we want experience. Um, but because we're playing on level one, 
we don't care for the experience, so we can actually technically die in three hits, take advantage of, uh, take advantage of us just being super weak. Yeah, but you gotta provoke each it. next attack while the current one is mm -hmm. happening, so it's, it's pretty tricky. To be as fast as possible, although funny enough, if you were to try to win that fight, there's only an assassin that spawns after that, and it's actually not that long to take out, but it's still not worth it on level one. Mm -hmm. That was a good fight, though. The, that was a good fight. It yes. was. That was and a par for the course on that one, yeah. I want to point out, so typically you do, like, even if you were to win the fight, it wouldn't be as long, or like, it wouldn't be that much of a time difference. However, this game does this, like, little, like, when you win the enemy, has, like, this nice little cinematic slowdown. That does not happen if you death. But even though the fight is typically close around the same speed sometimes, you still, it's typically around five seconds faster to just let the screen fade out versus getting the slow motion, the slow mo. Well, we're making our way to uh, what we call the basement fight, where we're going to be fighting four dusks and two spa uh, spawning assassins after we kill three dusks. Um, I feel like most people do different things in this fight because there's many different ways you can approach it. Um, yeah, I'm going to try a, a different opening here. We'll see if it works out. But go ahead. Okay. I, yeah, I'm glad I didn't guess what you were going <laughs> to do then. <laughs> like, I open with side swipes. There's some people open with aerial combos, some people spam RCs in between pokes and such. That's pretty unlucky. Yeah, so the opening that KBM went for is uh, he wanted to go to the far left dusk. And if you are technically angled far enough left, uh, when you do the reaction command, Roxas will swivel to the left side of it. So that way you're on the outside and you're hitting that dusk towards all the other. Um, That's what I was hoping for. Nice. Nice. So, so he provoked like an assassin there, yeah. <laughs> And so pretty much this is the last fight of this area. So I didn't get to, we didn't mention revenge value yet. However, your KBM is doing a slightly harder version of this fight by getting a quick attack earlier. And that attack he's getting is actually hitting Axel before he can even be staggered. And that's actually allowing him to not add any revenge value which I will go into deeper detail. However, it just allows him to get an extra hit for free without the boss retaliating any sooner. So it allows him to get, pretty much kill the fight faster. All right, so that finally concludes Roxas World. Now we get to finally play as Sora. Although he's, you know, base Sora isn't necessarily, you know, that much better than Roxas, but he still controls better overall. Uh, right now we're turning off, uh, or we're, t we're messing with items and abilities uh, on our party members. We're going to be doing that a lot. We steal items from party members because they love to use them immediately. So we rather have more control over them. And uh, abilities depend on the situation and uh, customizing uh, their AI. Uh, will allow the, us to control them better. All right, we got a couple death abuses. So we turned off Donald Cure, and Donald Thunder can hit all of the enemies in the world. So we turned that off. Uh, we, we put him on Sora attack, which means he won't attack at all. Just so we can get through these death abuses. Nice. Yeah, it sounds very good. And so now that KBM actually got through that death abuse, um, pretty much he's going to... Be, well, there's another death abuse coming up, but as KBM mentioned, he kind of he 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 unequipped Donald's cure. He left the Donald Thunder on. However, you can turn your party members to certain AI settings to make them do and not do certain things. So right now, Donald's only influence is just follow her around and not attack. That's why he didn't need to unequip the ability, and Donald's just gonna. Even though Sora's getting hit, he's just going to sit there and watch. But now, KBM's going to want to put him off of that setting and put him on Relentless Attack. So that way, pretty much Donald's going to make sure he focuses. Whatever target he's focusing on, he's going to focus on until it's dead. Exactly. So now you can even already see him using his thunder. And that's going to play into a big effect. Into that, That's been kind of like a big routing debate for level one throughout the course of the past couple of years. Because how you do this opening... <clears throat> how your party members are set they can influence how different boss fights behave especially in the early game and the certain mob fights that we're coming up against and so typically relentless gives you about the best result <laughs> there's some yin and yang here push and pull time save that you can get if you were to 
have different settings, but then you would lose that time from constantly met. You guys can see we're sort of at the mercy of the shadow AI there. They were a little trolly there. Yeah, and I, I, we might have mentioned earlier, but air combos are just way faster. And sometimes we actually don't do the finishers just because it allows us to control it better rather than knock the enemy that's not going to die yet across the, the room. Yeah, because because we're on level one, they take five hits to die. So if you were to just do a finisher, you're not going to kill it. You're just going to knock it away. However, it will. it is somewhat nice because even though you knock it away, they're, they're on their back. So that means that they can't go underground. But you, it's still just better to hope and pray that you can just keep hitting them with two hits and that they don't go underground. <laughs> anyway. This, so. this fight's always a mess like that on level one where you're kind of just hoping you get good cyclones and that your party members are actually helping kill them. <laughs> that wasn't bad, though. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty good fight, though. And KBM did a good job at positioning himself because the cyclone kind of goes at what... It's hard to explain. It's a weird yeah. triangulation. It's like a banana shape. I had a friend who called it the banana split. That's what we used to call it when you would get all three. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to sign off um, on that, but maybe. That's fine. <laughs> However, it's kind of so pretty much to kind of influence angle. We didn't get to fully explain it, but KBM was technically trying to angle himself a little bit backwards before he would actually do the reaction command just so that he gets that angle to swoop and hit all that enemies together. Biz, you want to tell us about Valor Form? So we get drive forms in this game that allow Sora to transform in, into different clothes, but also gain new abilities and uh, dual wield a keyblade in a lot of cases. Uh, Valor Form's our first one, which is 100% only a physical uh, form. We can't use any magic during it, so uh, we use it right now for movement, because as you can see, we're going to run a little faster. Uh, but there's definitely a, a ton of fights early game where we're actually going to utilize Valor Form, because it will actually do a bit more damage. And you'll see here uh, death ab when we attack with it a little bit. You'll see our, us try to take a death abuse. I guess I should also mention that the form, we're going to level up some of the forms a little bit. Uh, some of them are unintentional, like Valor form levels up off of uh, off of hits, uh, while other ones like Wisdom form level up off of Heartless kills and whatnot. Uh, so each form has a different way to level it up, but we will be utilizing some of them for the route. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so KVM is actually going to take a little detour and pick up this item. Who is right or no to the left? Picking up, it's a drive recovery, and this item is actually just gonna, even though like so, Valiform. Anytime you use a drive form, that little number at the bottom of Sora's and the on Sora's HUD, each drive form has their own like drive form number of points that they use. So right now he's at zero, even though he's at three. He was at three earlier, but typically that drive recovery is gonna give him three extra drive point usages, and he's gonna be using that for a boss later on coming up where he can use a drive form and then still keep his drive points available. Well, that's one way to go. Uh, if you're too close to an enemy, the guard just won't connect. So that's that's a good way to start the run, for sure. Yeah, we, we need a moment to mention how uh, awful the Bailey fight is. In level one, it is definitely a run killer fight for many different reasons. Um, it can kill you, as you can see, and it can go incredibly slow because... The speed of the fight is a lot of the time determined by Leon, who you cannot control. He can he can do the nice thing and go to the gate and swing around a bunch, but oftentimes, like right here, he's going to swipe that dusk backwards away from you, from everything else. And in other times, he'll shoot fireballs at them from a distance, doing almost nothing. Oh, this should be good, though. Let's see, he just sort of gets stuck. Oh, no, he actually came up. Yeah. Well, he's okay. going the wrong way. <laughs> this is this is the life of Bailey on level one. It's not fun. Yeah. It's not a fun fight. This fight is awful on almost every category, but on level one, it is exponentially more frustrating. It, yeah, it's because we don't have a lot of tools this early to be able to handle mob fights well. So we're at the mercy of uh, you know Leon, and then trying to get these really good dual stances. Those are two pretty solid ones. But you and can see Leon right here is ruining follow-up yeah. dual stances. Wow. And the defense system got me that time. It's a defense system. Yeah. <laughs> so the main thing that makes this fight so much worse on level one is all these little dual stances, these like little cinematic, uh, cool little sequences that we're getting with these samurai. They 
one-shot the samurai on just about every other category. But on level one, they deal half health. And because that they're still living, it's just very hard to keep control of how the fight's gonna go because you just can't kill them. And the AOE splash doesn't even kill the other enemies, so it's like you typically always need two. And the game is not set for you to get two of them and to keep everything in place because everything goes flying once you hit them anyway with the splash. So it, it, that fight's just, it's a headache. We're past it's it. It's rough. Uh, that that wasn't too bad. <laughs> Yeah, so, so that one was pretty solid, roughly what you would mostly want at level one. There's only so much you can do unless you get really lucky, basically. Yeah. Uh, this would be normally where we get a gummy mission, but we're playing on PC modded, and the speedrun on PC does allow you to skip gummy missions. Uh, so you don't have to sit here and watch us go through three minute auto scrollers for almost every world. <laughs> So we jump right into Beast Castle. Uh, we're going to take a Death of Beast here, but I guess I should mention that there, there's always confusion of why we go here first over LOD. I mean, the short answer is it's faster. Uh, the long answer is that <laughs> we're going to get more tools to actually make LOD faster. There's a lot more fights in LOD, and we'll be much stronger to plow through those than if we uh, went there first and then did this later. Right, every required fight in this world is actually a boss or mini boss. Well, there's a bunch of little heartless fights in LOD, and that's really where the difference is. Yeah. And I did mention that even though, like, the reason for Kibin picking up that little strength weapon at the start, plus uh, losing to Setter in the struggle match, that's typically not enough to give us more strength. But we're gonna, after we finish this world, we're gonna have access to another world that is also typically much harder. But the roar from it is gonna it's gonna give us a keyblade with higher strength and that is actually enough between that and a little power boost we're gonna get in that world right is even enough to make lod much faster even in valor we're under the damage floor here right yes <laughs> yes because this has a higher battle level than LOD. right yeah. this is where relentless uh, really helps because they focus the boss yeah there's a very op specific opening KBM's doing here to try to provoke both gargoyles, and it worked perfectly where they're in the back so we can safely get the reaction command to one-shot them, and then he's free to attack the threshold, or we have to take those gargoyles out or else they'll just end up killing us really fast. Right, yeah, it's a fun place where... Two hits. Sorry, it's a fun place where the game knowledge comes in handy because uh, it takes exactly three flinch to get that attack from this, uh, the axe gargoyle, the spinny spin. They hit him exactly three yes. times and you get that. Uh, so to kind of quickly explain more of what KBM was saying there is enemies have two different type of counters. They have a revenge counter and a flinch counter. Flinch counter just means how many times the enemy flinches from you hitting them. And some enemies behave differently depending on how many times they flinch. And at the beginning, KBM makes sure that, that the enemy flinched three times to give him the little spin. And during that spin, he could just run away and keep his eye on the other gargoyle and kind of line them up, have them meet together. That was a good fight. Yeah, yeah. That was a good fight. <laughs> I was like amazed by how well that was going that I was like, trying to <laughs> yeah. talk. Well, was it's like... because we have uh, we have reaction boost because of critical mode and the bat cries from the bats just do so much damage. It's so much better than our base combo right now. Yeah, we have not seen the last of bat cry. So remember that one. <laughs> yes. It's a, it is actually is a pretty strong RC. It's incredible. For early game. <laughs> if we did not have it, level one would It'd be pretty bad. <laughs> It'd be, It'd be that pretty threshold rough. would be a super run killer randomly, I think. Mm -hmm. Every time uh, would be Bailey, pretty much. <laughs> one of the many fun Kingdom Hearts mini games we got here. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just clear a path, go to the lanterns. I think there was some we debate. Way to we, I, I, we had some debate recently over whether Miss Potts is filled with oil to light the lanterns, or if like her tea or water is putting out the dark flames. What do you guys think? I always thought it was just like water. It's just like putting out the dark flames. Uh, maybe if we let the cutscene play out, we can learn the lore. <laughs> maybe next you time. You know what? I put a lot of time into this game. A lot of thinking. We used to grab I've this AP boost that. in the chest there, which lets you equip more abilities. But we have uh, routed around that, taken out some abilities that are more uh, quality of life that we don't actually need. But to answer your question, I think she's lighting the... Okay. She's pouring it out, like she's putting it out. 
This is a little bit of an interesting mini boss fight where you're actually finding soon to be a party member beast, a little bit uh, possessed, I guess. Uh, just different ways you can handle this, but the bottom line is that he doesn't fully stagger completely. He eventually will super armor, so we have to work around that and stun him with Cogsworth. Uh, we have to be careful, you know, he does two shot, or well, two shot and three shot. Oof. Rude. <laughs> So I was, yeah, I was gonna say he he two shots you. Um, I've been in that situation. Luckily, plenty of times. luckily though, this game's and how the game works with iframes. If an attack does not knock Sora into the sky, typically you can't get hit again once you get hit once. You want to tell me about that tutorial skip? What I just did? Uh, I voluntarily read that tutorial there. Yeah. So pretty much. Um, the game is waiting for you to pause. <laughs> right. And during the speedrun, we really take these forced menus where the game is automatically putting us in the menu without us doing anything. And so what KBM did was he made sure to, when he was on the items, to select the tutorial, which is going to give us two pages, versus if you were to pause, the game would try to tell him about dry forms and abilities. Well, I think we already got the ability one, but it'll tell you about the dry forms and items. So pretty much just cut out three extra tutorial pages that we don't need to get. Because the game is just checking off that we did a tutorial, so it's not going to remind us of that. <laughs> very, very nice. This is... This is a little bit of a unique boss where actually the way we open the fight uh, changes the boss's AI. Uh, KBM moved backwards there to force it to uh, do the chandelier instead of run into the wall instantly, and it gives us a faster pattern of attacks. Even though he'll eventually do the same attacks, it's just in a different order that allows us to manipulate him a little bit better. He also got the luckiest pillar. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> Where's the pillar manipulation at? I messed it up. Ah, of course. It's a PC. It doesn't work on PC. Yeah. <laughs> PC modded, not a PC. Oh, who wants to tell about limits? We just did a limit. Uh, I can let you do that, Biz. All right, so um, just like dry forms, we also get limits, which will use our entire MP bar. So um, it allows us to join with uh, one or more party members to do a, a combo attack is generally the way the game describes it. Uh, we used Beast there. His limit actually does a good amount of damage. So uh, it, it, and we're going to use it in the next fight as well, almost immediately. And you'll see that we alternate with uh, the reaction command triangle and then attack. Generally, Sora is the one that does the attack, and the triangle is the party member doing the attack. And uh, you're also uh, fully invincible during it, so it's incredibly useful on level one. Uh, but after these air combos, and he got interrupted, so he had to jump right into the limit. So he's invincible during all of this and dealing pretty good damage for level one. Um, he is going to end it early, though. So what KBM is doing here... This is a beautiful use of an ability that we just got called Upper Slash, where we are actually knocking the boss up in the sky, which is actually just super cool, in my opinion. So most of the time, we don't have any other way of actually fly, making a boss fly. But however, what we're doing is we're actually manipulating its revenge value to where it's gonna... We're making it attack, and we pretty much iframe through it, and then we can go back into the loop. It's a good, safe way to do this fight. Because even though this strat is difficult, trying to play this fight casually is even more difficult. <laughs> if you don't do this strat, it, you're literally at the mercy of just whatever happens. It's Most a tough of the fight. time, yeah, I will say this is probably the first big hurdle for a lot of people playing level one and most people typically use get through that fight by playing as Mickey. <laughs> Which we will see soon coming up. Yeah, I guess we'll talk about that later. But yeah, that fight is, that fight is pretty rough on level one because it's super easy to die. There's a lot of backups we can do if it goes wrong, though. But it's a big time loss either way. Yeah, Biz uh, mentioned. Now, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say Biz mentioned earlier that you level up Valor form by hitting stuff, and we got a whole bunch of hits in that last world, and I just barely hit level two Valor at the very end. And so there's a, a slightly faster strat you can do when you're fighting Beast, but I chose the strat that I did because it gives you more Valor hits, and I really value that level 2, and we just barely got it, so that's why I do it. Exactly, and so now we're in, uh, it might be debatable, but this is sometimes considered the worst level 1 world. It is awful all around, very random uh, boss fights, slow movement, because we, we can't use Valor in the, this part of the underworld right now. 
So we're just doing base running in combat. Uh, we're about to enter... Th this next fight uh, is a giant mob fight with an invincible Hades. Uh, very big casual killer for level one. A lot of people struggle with it a lot. I uh, struggle with it a lot. And we have to do it fast. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, the speed run, obviously, we have to do it fast, so we can't camp it out. So we have to go yeah. as fast, you know, try to go fast <laughs> while we have an invincible boss chucking fireballs at us constantly, surrounded by enemies that, you know, two shot us. I appreciate lore seeping into the gameplay choices, like taking away your drive. But on the other hand, it is very, very frustrating to not have it. Mm -hmm. One of our best tools is just gone. Huh. All right, it. so I'm going to explain this. So typically on some of these other fights that we've been death abusing, they also have a hit counter. There's also a very weird mechanic here where we're ending the fight early by getting three hits on Hades and pretty much jumping back to cure our party members. And it's like, I think the active hit boxes of like, the active heal boxes are adding to Hades because he technically can't be hit. I'm not sure if that's correct. That's an interesting that thought. Fight. I just assumed it's because it, I don't know, it counts as uh, cure or hitting your party members in a way or something. But or that too. At, at any rate, uh, you're going to see lots of bat cries. Uh, you already saw one at the beginning of this. This one, he's going to try to get lucky, see what happens with Hades here. Hades did the, the, oh. the best thing probably possible there, oh. which is oh. swipe and miss. <laughs> is so we don't have best. to go into a safety limit. That was pretty much perfect. I'm gonna take so this we're going to see... It's a good move. <laughs> Money's important in this run. Um, he's going to try to... He waits for Hades there so he doesn't show up at a terrible time when he tries to get this RC. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is a party member hitting the bat because they will cancel the bat cry RC before you get it. But this is looking pretty good so far. The Lancer was out of range, but not a big deal because easy follow-up. Uh, and then we have the final wave, uh, which he looks decently set up for. He's going to get a... Oop, this is a bit of a... Okay, he played it safe. That was smart. That, that was very safe, and I 100% <laughs> appreciate it. I agree with that. that uh, yeah, if he went guess. for the... Yeah, if he went for the reaction command there with the bat, not at full HP, uh, he could have been frame trap killed on the way down. All right, not so bad at that all. That ended up being a pretty good Hades, yeah. especially for a marathon. Not bad at all. That's... Not even definitely take that in a run. Just take that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's that a perfect tier one. Comfy every time, no yeah. limit tier two. <laughs> yeah, I'm into it. Very good. I always love the joke saying, whenever Hades swipes and punches, it's like he's swiping and his card just gets declined. <laughs> I love it. But we're Accurate. actually coming up to another typically horrible boss fight on level one if you're playing casually. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think this is the worst fight in the game. Fortunately, we have a strat for it, but there's yes. no way. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you. But it's so, not a fun fight, like, casually, yeah. <laughs> the worst designed fight, I guess, is what I meant. Yeah, there's, it's pretty bad, yeah. <laughs> like, on, at least on Darkthorn, you can interact with him from the very beginning, but you can't really interact with this fight until he's almost dead. Yeah, until like half HP. So we're abusing a mechanic in this game that uh, casually uh, critical and level one players probably already know where you can get Mickey in some fights. It's predetermined what fights he can show up in. And the first time that you die in a fight that he can show up in, it's 100% chance of him showing up. But after that, it immediately drops down to 80% until it bottoms out at 50%. Uh, Mickey's not very good at attacking physically, but his uh, magic pearl attack, as you saw, it actually does pretty good damage. Much more than Sora would be capable of at level 1, so we are very happy to die in this fight, summon Mickey and do two rounds of pearls, and then summon Sora back up here. And then Cerberus being at 1 HP, hopefully we could just pelt him with magic for the kill. It's worth mentioning that uh, Orin's limit is very, very bad especially compared to Beast's Limit, which was great for dealing damage on that last boss. So if you tried to fight Cerberus the normal way, you're going to have a tough time, even with Orin's Limit. Right, and Orin's Limit is also even more for mobs than bosses, yeah. too. Yeah. But there's not very many fights, at least in the first visit, you can use it in, so it comes off as mostly worthless. It's special in that fight because it typically hits on the ground, and all of Cerberus' hitboxes are not on the ground, <laughs> so I can't just miss it half the limit. It, and it, it if you're already on the doesn't stairs, have many hits. Yeah. Oh, if you're on oh, elevation, yes. it doesn't it barely works at all in general. <laughs> yes, I actually forgot about that. It's 
<laughs> it's definitely one of the worst limits in the game. <laughs> it's definitely D tier. We got so this is classic. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say this is another moment that people kind of take for granted until they realize until you decide to not play on critical mode. Because doing this without draw actually requires like thinking. <laughs> Here we're just pretty much swinging and just that's it. But and that's just because we have the draw ability, which is just one of the good <laughs> drawbacks of playing on critical mode. And uh, yeah. Just yeah, we just need to be relatively fast here. We don't have to go crazy, but, yeah. you know, uh, I, unless you guys know the secret, I don't know what spawns the uh, big early urn. Um, I have theories. They're not all 100% certain. I do think it's influenced partially on when you kill certain ur urns and if you're in the air or not. But I'm yeah, not and all my theories were wrong, so maybe yours is right. I don't believe that I at all. I think it's just random. <laughs> That's, that's the time for outside of the yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's for the lab. <laughs> um, but so over here now, this there was a flame kind of blocking our passage here, and it's magically gone now. Hip hip hooray. And we get this power boost. That power boost is gonna be very significant coming up. Not for the for this world. Right, it doesn't do anything for the rest of this world. So I'm not gonna use it yeah. until later. Mm -hmm. You'd be thinking, why isn't using it? There's a fight coming up, but it, it actually doesn't make a difference, sadly. And yep. that's all because of the way the damage scaling calculation works, where right now we can't beat out the floor even with that one, that plus one to strength. Marathon ether. But it will matter in one other world after this. <laughs> oh my. Did you see I that? I was about <laughs> to say you were walking a little too left, my friend. <laughs> I was expecting you to just get blindside. I mean, it's optimal if you're lucky like that. He <laughs> hit one of the true. bubbles in the air. I've never yeah. seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to quickly mention that this is one of the sm slight differences about doing Beast Castle early, which is a level one exclusive thing for routing. Um, that actually has a bigger benefit here because Donald actually gets fired from the boss that we fought on the wall. Um, and Donald using fire here He's actually able to kill these water clones. Right, it's not Pokemon rules. Spawn. You need fire, not thunder. Yeah. <laughs> and this is one of the bigger time advantages you get on level one. It's not Holy that crap. big, but this is, yeah. On level one, that you was can very typically fast. get 50 <laughs> or higher. And it, you sometimes you struggle. Yeah, 50 yeah, is about you average. You struggle to get 40 on anything other than level one. Like. 42 is average. World like record is a category. 41. Just saying. Wow. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was incredible. That was amazing. <laughs> uh, so right now we got uh, basically this. You're probably going to wonder why we're not just like kind of wreck and Pete right now. But that's because this is one of those fights that's completely timed. We have no way to progress it faster to get into the phase two of the fight. So all we're going to do is uh, kill all the bats to keep Meg safe and then uh, I assume I don't know if KVM is gonna go first. I don't uh, think so. Soldier. I don't think no, so. No, okay. So he's just gonna keep Pete busy, basically. We can control his AI by poking him out of this every time. That bat does not want to die. He's a trooper. So uh, this fight lasts uh, sixty seconds, and pretty much yeah, we can just do whatever we want. Yeah. The reason Pete is so annoying is this bubble right here. If he does this, you just lose a bunch of time. And this is very unfortunate. And he heals him too, that's right. And if he gets bonked by anything, it just like knocks him back and resets the timer on it. Like and your that. party members just love yeah. to hit him. Well, before the fight's over, hopefully in a flash, uh, the next phase is actually incredibly dangerous on level one. There's two openings we can get. We can get an immediate pinball from Pete, or he's just going to throw a ball. Pinball's better because we get a better setup, and we did not, unfortunately, get it. So KVM's going to try to get a few back cries here. We're going to try our best to stay away from the ghosts. Um, okay. Oh, that was, that was the first time I have ever seen that. <laughs> I, hey, you know yeah. what? It's okay. The ghosts are dead. The ghosts are dead, wow. though. So. Okay. Oh. Interesting. It's, this is going interesting. It's working. It's just, you know, not what we expected. <laughs> Hercule, Hercule, oh, sure, man. Wow. Okay. But now, but the nice thing now is we pretty much are completely safe. Nothing can yes. kill us unless we go crazy mode. Other than I'm gonna go crazy mode for 
Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. That was, no, that was fine. That was not that wasn't, crazy I know, mode. I know. You yeah, can't call I'm that just trying to hype up the chat a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> That's not um, so. That's not the peat fight you would expect, but that is, for a marathon run, we take those. <laughs> uh, we oh, we finally have Trinity limits. So until now, limits were only with one other party member. Now we have our triple group Trinity. Uh, that allows us to. Uh, tr it does damage based on hits, so you're gonna see us open the fight with it after taking a hit. Uh, we're gonna do Ultima. And then end Trinity. You can do all three parts of Trinity, uh, and then it does damage based on hits, but there's a lot of HP barriers in this fight uh, where you can't do more damage than what's scripted. So we only do one part of Trinity there. Yeah, and to note, that's actually kind of a newer tech um, recently where typically we used to do, uh, we'd start Trinity in the beginning of the fight, use Sora's part called Break, and then go into Ultima, which is Donald's part. But there was actually, a, I'm not sure exactly who found it. It was found off of a small Japanese YouTube channel, I believe. And he found a trick that if you get hit by the tail, Donald's typically gonna die. But you can actually potion buffer a uh, potion on Donald so that when he gets hit by the tail, you can start Trinity, and then you only have to do... This is a very specific Trinity, by the way. Lining up that Ultima is the whole ball game. Yes. But it was Every beautiful! we use Trinity, by the way, in this game... That was we... a good Trinity and good pattern to get. <laughs> yes. Everything we do here with Trinity is always calculated. Even though sometimes it may look like we're just, hey, we're just choosing a button to press. Everything is calculated. Positioning, timing, and what we use is all heavily important. And that was a clean. Rock very, solid very, Olympus. Very clean fight. Extremely <laughs> good Olympus. That was very good. And yeah, so we got Hero's Crest, which is that Keyblade that I said we we're going to be getting at the end of this world. So it has one extra strength. We lose a point in magic, but that does not really matter because our magic is going to be doing the same damage regardless. And it actually comes, the ability that's attached to it is air combo boost. And correct me if I'm wrong, um, I believe it increases the finisher of your, the damage of your finisher by 25%. It depends on how long the combo is. Yes, but uh, the base is 25, I believe. I would have said Probably 20. Probably somewhere around Something there. like that, yeah. It's enough to be very worth it, so we keep it on yes. for a long time. <laughs> Not yet, though, obviously. We have a little death abuse here where nice. we're just going to take a couple quick hits. That was very good, by the way. <laughs> yeah. That was close. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, we're going too fast now. <laughs> yeah, I used to so, like jump into that thing, and now I'm not so sure that jumping is better. I I started doing that because you were doing it, and now and now I'm not sure either. <laughs> <laughs> if like only jumping. we had some way to time things. To be honest, I started jumping to prevent what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good point. Oops. The PS4 touchpad strikes again. Yeah, uh, a lot of us complain about that. It's really easy when we're trying to press the start button to accidentally hit either triangle or the touchpad because they're basically touching each other. It's quite obnoxious. <laughs> Let's deal with our new party uh, member. I wanted to mention, uh, at the start of this fight, you're technically mashing out some text boxes, which is the only fight that starts with text boxes on screen. However, if you mash them all fast enough and you hold forward, the enemy's AI is determined by what King does. And I believe Kabin was the one who found it, and it's he coined the term called King Prediction. And it pretty much allows you to know if the shadows at the start of the fight are going to go underneath the ground or if they're going to stay up. And because ping followed, they all stayed up, and typically that makes the fight just much nicer. Yeah, so... And, yeah, I'll oh, let you talk about this. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you're probably wondering, uh, like I said earlier, now we have more tools. We have Heroes Crest for more aerial damage, and we have Trinity. Uh, and the strength boost we... Uh, uh, just used a little earlier is actually going to make an impact here. So now we can plow through these enemies. Um, so this world's going to be a lot faster now than if we came around here the first time. Uh, assault Riders are actually pretty dangerous on level 1, but with Valor, uh, they go down pretty quickly. We can plow right through their super armor. 
up. And one of the best things about Valorform is even though things may, can get shaky, Valorform has an ability to where most, as I stated earlier, most combos have a hit-hit finisher type, unless if you have like some type of ability that increases the number of hits of your combos. But Valorform has an ability that says, it doesn't matter how many hits you have in your combo, you can choose to go into your finisher at any moment by pressing square. And that finisher actually will break enemies' attacks. We are having a bad time with these shadows. They can come out. <laughs> and so we got to see use of that right there in the previous mission where KBM was able to stop the enemies from attacking and just by going to his finisher. Yeah, missions, uh, you know, they're just like, we're trying our best to go through. We still don't have like awesome uh, mob control yet. Uh, you'll see a lot of that, a lot of the cooler stuff later. So right now we're doing the best we can. Uh, so right now, you know, we have a bunch of shadows. We're going to have to try to uh, hope they don't go under the ground. We can snipe them with thunder, as you can see, to try to prevent them from going back underground. Uh, it's working well so far. That was pretty good. And I want to note earlier, we talked about changing party members' AI by like the different settings we can put them on. So we had Donald on Relentless. Well, we had him on Sword Attack in the beginning to make it not attack. We put him on Relentless so he could do focus a lot on killing enemies and using a lot of his MP bar. But something we didn't mention earlier was that before KBM was doing that whole mob fight where he was running Ow. away from Hades, he actually put Donald on Party Attack. And pretty much what that does, it, it makes him really not attack, or it makes Donald attack enemies other than Sora. But in, typically in this case, if there's one enemy, Donald will attack. And with Donald on party attack, it allowed him to actually help kill the shadows with KBM in the beginning of the fight. And that allows to make the fight go by much faster than if you were to just keep him on relentless, because then he will choose to not attack. So in Mountain Climb, we definitely want to clear this uh, little group of enemies before going for this RC because uh, you can actually get hit uh, during certain parts of it right there. That was just a well-timed RC. If he went up there and just mashed it, he would have been interrupted. Right, something like Backcry, uh, you're here. totally invincible, but uh, this weird one here, they can knock you right out of it. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's only certain parts. So that was pretty clean, what we expect. We have uh, cave, what we call Cave Fight coming up next. It's actually uh, an another tricky level one fight that it can actually kill you uh, if you slip up a little bit too much. Um, yeah. The strats for this have changed a lot over time for handling all the shadows. So uh, first, we got to get rid of this Assault Rioter because we can't have him hanging around. Uh, these double finishers he's doing are hard staggering him. In a, he's doing it very specifically. If you don't do it like that, they will break out and actually hit you. Just to throw out that Assault Rider trick right there. He's going to try to AoE fire kill these uh, shadows really fast. Oh, I thought that uh, would to transition. spawn the second wave. Yeah, that must have been really close. Yeah, that's so now we have the second right. wave. He's going to let them all come to him and then go into Solo Trinity. So you saw, uh, you saw Group Trinity already. Uh, without party members, it turns into Solo Trinity, which is just uh, Sora kind of swinging around randomly. But it happens to work out well here. And that was pretty clean. As you saw, I kind of just killed everything during all that. And don't forget, we were invincible during it too. OK, so I want to point out, KBM actually showed, like, that was a very good display of having to overcome, adapt in the moment right there, because he dropped his finisher to actually do the double finisher staggering which he was showcasing earlier and how those enemies work after one finisher they will be staggered but if you try to do a second finisher most of the time you break their stagger and then they'll attack you however um unlike and just like most enemies those enemies also do have a sort of revenge value but kbm was able to use a one finisher because he knew he wasn't in a good position to get the double finisher stagger to stagger him with a one finisher and re get regain good positioning to be able to then stun him for the rest of his life bar without him actually getting an attack out i'm glad you that's noticed not that. something you typically do and yeah that was just a showcase of being a good player. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's quite a few times where actually you do have to adapt to the situation. Not everything's going to work as planned every time. Whether or not it's player fault, it depends on the fight, obviously. But sometimes it's just luck is not in your favor. And it's it takes a lot of runs and practice to be able to handle situations like that. To be able to adapt if something goes wrong. Because if, if it goes wrong and you're not prepared for it, you'll probably just end, uh, end up dying repeatedly. Yeah. Here we're just trying uh, to make some money from the bolt yeah. towers. 
Uh, yeah, and you could actually die pretty easy here if you let the bull towers uh, kind of mess with you a little bit too much. Um, so you do have to be a little careful and try to stay in the air a lot, but uh, otherwise, yeah, you're only here for money and looking out for the RCs. All right, so while we're waiting for this timer to finish off, I know I said I was going to explain Revenge Value, and I want to kind of get to that a little bit now because we're going to start seeing it more into play coming up for these next, pretty much for the rest of the run. Pretty much enemies have a built-in mechanic that says, I'm not going to let you keep hitting me for forever. <laughs> and so typically, if you hit an enemy just too many times, they're just going to retaliate. You're going to say, I don't care what you're doing. It's my turn to attack. Um, and there's a lot of science behind it. There's a lot of math realistically behind it, but every attack has their own set revenge value number. And so a lot of the times we are trying to kill enemies. We're trying to kill enemies before we hit their, what we call force revenge. I don't know what happened Pretty with the keyblade there. That was, don't worry about that. Oh, Sorry, keep going, Sid. <laughs> I was wondering, yeah. Yeah, I was doing the LOD2 menu because I was listening to Sid. That, that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty much throughout most of the run, we do specific combos, or we need to make sure we are keeping track of enemies' revenge value to make sure that we know when they're going to force revenge. And it's very difficult because it's not the same for every fight. Every boss has their own revenge value or force revenge value. Even some phases in the middle of bosses have their own force revenge value. But typically, a good way to know it is that most normal swings do one and finishes do three. Some magic, most magic do three, and that's a good way of a base understanding. It doesn't apply to everything, but we're going to be seeing that here. Where typically we're going to be seeing KBM actually purposely have an attack miss to make it not add revenge value, so that way he can make Sean Yu. Um, do an action at the right time. We call it the hot phase transition, where he's trying to actually force revenge at the same time that we push his um, HP gate to phase push, and we're gonna stop an animation from happening. He's pretty much gonna try to attack, and we're just gonna, he's just gonna stop and immediately go into his phase, just like that. And yeah, this should be a good fight. I figured out how to dodge the bird, by the way. <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. I did. <laughs> Problem solved. The bird's a level one casual killer, and even in the speed run, if the fight goes wrong, the bird does a good job of uh, finishing you off. So this is about as this is about as good as this fight gets, roughly. Yeah, so excellent fight. Yeah, that solid. Was, like you are having really good fights this one. I'm really happy. <laughs> yeah, this is good so far. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take um, a little break here, I believe. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're gonna take a quick break before we get into more of the run. I'll count you down, KBM. Here. Uh, okay, oh. you ready? Pause. Uh, but the, <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll count you down. Yeah, the pause. Count me down. So, <laughs> uh, three. Actually, wait, no, there's, there's cuts in here. But this is a good time, everybody, to stretch, get some water. Uh, let's give a quick, take a little breather before we get more into the super intense run. I'll wait till you like, load in. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, so we'll pause right here. And then we'll go ahead and go to that break. But before I do that, I just want to make a quick announcement. Before we head off here, uh, just a reminder that your subs, your Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bitch cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support games done quick hotfix. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed the daily speedrunning content. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also go to twitch.tv slash games done quick if you're interested in checking out our live content. And uh, we'll be back in just a little bit, everybody. Stay tuned. All right, welcome Hello back, everybody. Welcome back, everybody, to the GDQ Hot Fix. We're here with a world record recap. KBM here is running Kingdom Hearts 2, Final Mix HD, Critical Level 1, Any Percent, long title. And uh, just recently got world record in the PS5 version of this category. We're doing the PC modded version today just because it's better for the broadcast. All you need to know about PC modded is we're just skipping the gummy, skip, gummy ship auto scrollers. So that's the only thing you need to be aware of. Before we get right back into the run, I just wanted to make a little announcement that Frame Fatales, our GDQ, you know, all-women, online speedrun community, they have an upcoming event, Flame Fatales. It'll run uh, very soon, August 13th. Wow, that's that's literally like two weeks away. Uh, through the 20th, schedule is now out at gdqgamesonquick.com slash schedule. 
And while you're checking out the schedule, feel free to submit a prize for the event. Use exclamation point FF in Twitch chat to submit the prizes. And uh, the last day to submit those prizes is August 6th. So if you want to get in on that, better hurry. Uh, so yeah, KBM, why don't you take it away from here and we can get back into the run. All right, let's count it in. Three, two, one, go. Uh, so we actually just got a new Keyblade in LOD. Biz, you want to tell them about that? Uh, what, the uh, Hidden the Dragon? Hidden Dragon. Oh, uh, arguably one of the worst? Probably. <laughs> I, I know it's debatable because it does have, technically have one use, but so it has MP Rage attached to it, which means if you have MP, uh, but it's not full, any hits you take, depending on how hard it hits you, you get MP back. So it pretty much revolves around if you intend to get hit a lot, it might have some use. But we don't on level one intend to get hit much. Stats are so also very easy, low. and the stats aren't good anyway. But yeah. <laughs> this way. Uh, but anyway, this, uh, that was Let's basically go. the end of early game generally, and this is where we kind of say mid game starts with a fun escort mission. Uh, cool trick. This is actually not like a super old uh, tech where we can push mini up against the wall. Uh, it's actually kind of hard. It looks easy to do, but it actually is kind of difficult to do that well. She is very slippery. It is really difficult. <laughs> yeah, there's like seven different ways that can go wrong, and then you just have to bail on the strat, or you really just, uh, or if you're stubborn enough, you'll stick with it and lose like 20 seconds. This one, on the other hand, there's not much we can do. She has a pretty strong attack that we can use to knock everybody away. But uh, she has a very, uh, like a maximum distance she can run on each cycle. So we're really just going through the motions. Let's go. There's a few ways to skip this an way. RC from her, but Let's go. that's nice. probably never ever too worth to ever this try way. to go find a run. But I do want to actually kind of go, go back to that little hidden dragon comment about the Keyblade. Um, so as Biz was saying, the ability has MP Rage. The one good thing about it is he, he said that when you get hit, it gives you MP. So pretty much when you lose HP, you gain MP. However, it is tied, it is relative to how much damage you take. And because on level 1 we take so much damage, you almost will always get all of it. Is it percentage-based? Uh, yes, it's relative to how much damage you take. That's yeah, so the bigger the hit, yeah. for level one. Best category. Best hidden dragon route. <laughs> it's you never know. I mean, we always think that a uh, fight is completely maxed out in strat, and then we <laughs> find something new to speed it up. It, you know, it's a, it's possible we could find a move that doesn't one shot us, but almost does, to where we can actually use it to spam more magic. But you know, <laughs> funnily enough, I want to say, um, back when I was trying to find chat for this game every single day, I actually was trying to use Hidden Dragon on. Medallion fight? <laughs> that can make sense. Oh, I can see that. But I'm not gonna... Yeah. <laughs> That's so, yeah. yeah. I, I can see it working, but the amount of risk, man. <laughs> yeah, the pass speed here doesn't really have a revenge value, so we can just beat him up until the fight's over, as long as we don't let him break out. But again, that's yes. why air hits are so much better, because you have almost no lag when you land, so you can just keep going. Yeah, buffering, uh, stuff like buffering jumps too and whatnot is very useful. You have to be pretty proficient at buffering jumps off of other aerial combos to continue fast air combos in this run. Uh, so we're going to see our first uh, use of a summon here. Uh, casually, people don't uh, fully understand summons a lot of the time, and sometimes they get written off. Like, they'll use Chicken Little on a boss fight where he does nothing and think he's useless. But as you can see, he's actually incredibly useful in mob fights. He brings in enemies from a distance and he also has a, a move which can deal damage to them when he pulls them in uh all kbm is trying to do here you know bring them in kill the waves he got launched and he spammed the reaction command bestie that was perfect i can't even keep up that with was, those that was chef's kiss. <laughs> yeah those blizzard <laughs> finishers are some new tech i've been working on i don't know if you guys saw those i like it and i, I was yeah yeah <laughs> i wanted to comment on it but i don't want to interrupt this yeah, Very so we're nice. gonna see we're gonna see that in all these windows. Basically, is we're gonna bring out Chicken Little in all four windows and try to use him best we can. It's te he's we manipulate uh, the enemies being pulled in because Chicken Little, if he's next to you and enemies are far away like that, what you saw right there, uh, he'll bring him in. Sometimes his AI gets a little funky though and doesn't want to do it. Like right there, he choked a little bit on that plane far away. Not me, Chicken Little. In. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was <laughs> six million IQ. Oh my goodness. So uh, that's another one of those. That's not what was in the script moments, yeah. but that's a very good display of showing that KVM has played this game maybe once or twice. A few times, yeah. I say three times, Max. So he's a quick learner. He's a he's a natural. Just to note, summons use the same resources as drives. So if we're using summons, uh, which to use three drive gauges, we, that means we can't go into a drive right after either. So we have one or the other. But as you can see, there's no way Valor would ever be faster here just because it, you know, it's a physical form that's not going to do a lot of damage and doesn't really crowd control well. Uh, but Chicken Little's just very efficient at bringing stuff in. So I guess I want to point out um, in different other categories of this game, most, it's actually funny. Uh, it, I think every category, the windows are drawn in different orders. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and level one, we actually, is the only category that uses Chicken Little on all four of the windows. Typically, the um, every other category just opts to not use Chicken Little on the, the previous window that KBM did. It's technically window four, even though it's the third fight. But that we actually, we don't need to have our drive anymore because on this next part that we're about to go to... I just no want to say, you can see how amazing it. Ultima is when there's a bunch of enemies. Just Ultima I alone I didn't get racked up so many hits that. from all the little fires <laughs> on the ground and just does a ton of damage. I don't think we mentioned it yet, but because we haven't really had a chance to really utilize it much for the most part yet, but in this game, there are opportunities where we can get our drive back for free, and one of them is if uh, you're in a form or a summon and you're going into a room where your party is not with you, it actually auto-reverts you and gives you full drive back, so we actually do abuse that a lot. Yes. Because as you can see, building drive back can be a little bit slow sometimes. So this fight, I want to point out, is arguably one of the worst fights. You're going to hear us say that a lot, but it's, this fight's awful. However, a couple years ago, we discovered, I think it was another Japanese player. It was Yachi. Uh, yes. Yachi okay, Nanase. So was Yachi. Bless that person. <laughs> he had found a little trick, because typically, during this fight, Donald will shoot about three thunders, and then he'll just start calling what we call the jitterbug, where he's just happy feet. He's just running. Run this feet. And he won't do anything for the rest of the fight. But there is a little trick that if you actually equip Donald with another spell, in this case fire, he will typically use three thunders and one fire and kind of repeat that cycle. And that means he will never stop trying to attack the crate and we desperately need his help to be able to kill that crate in one uh, Good fight. That was cycle. that was pretty close. Yeah. The fear of that fight was getting thrown off of Bo P and then you have to go through the cycles of knocking him back out again. That's the only problem because otherwise it's an easy fight. Right. If you're doing the finisher yes. when the RC comes up, you won't be able to grab it. So it's very scary. Yeah. All right, so I want to over the course and kind of to go with the theme from what Echi was saying about, you know, about this being from record and just all the different advancements over the couple of years with this category. This is also another slightly different opening on the strat that KBM is doing for this fight. Nice camera. Um, <laughs> but you can see again, you know Ultima on these fires gets so many hits and just does a ton of damage and the face is over. Yes. That is not helpful. Unless, wow. That is not helpful. <laughs> I mean, it's worth it. Yeah, big deal. <laughs> One of the best things to note about playing this game is you can never talk about it because the game is listening. The game is yeah. always hearing what you say. And if you try to say something, it will prove you wrong. <laughs> so... <laughs> This is, I want to kind of point out how I mentioned about bosses having revenge value or force revenge. He is actually doing that. We're manipulating him to keep doing that same force retaliation. And we are keeping track of his revenge value pretty much. It's no number that you see on screen. Just math that KBM is doing in the background or just knowing how the fight works. And this fight is also very complicated in the fact that every phase transition that you see, Pete has a different force revenge value number and so you'll see how tight this thread is i'm just gonna get back to three bars yeah Woo. 
It's so good, though. <laughs> this ending that Kabum's doing, it's an alternative ending that makes this a lot, a lot, a lot nicer. <laughs> I'll just Perfect say fight. That. Another very well, pretty solid uh, timeless in general. Yeah, that was so. a rock solid timeless, really good. Yeah, that was very, very good. I think that's better than record, almost certainly. <laughs> so now we actually, yeah, now we actually get uh, our second form, wisdom form, which we will definitely utilize and actually intentionally level up eventually uh, for growth ability. I guess we'll get into that when we get there, um, but. Uh, I, there's not much of a reason to mention it too in depth right now, but yes, uh, we avoid getting anti form. And nice. one of the good things is when you get a new form, your anti point counter, which is a hidden point counter in the game, goes down to zero every time you get a new form. So we'll get more into that later when we actually force anti form. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's actually a very good point. I'm happy you said that. Um, I also want to point out. Typically as well, this is probably one of the hardest worlds for casual level one play. If you're playing this game with very little experience and you don't understand that magic is useful, even though the game tells you, literally. Uh, but if you don't catch on to that little tip, uh, this world's a nightmare. Even if you're, even then, if you're not <laughs> using Chicken Little, it's still a nightmare. Yes, I was gonna say that too. Typically, in a casual perspective, you're not using night. It's a nightmare. But in a speedrun, if you're not using Chicken Little. It's also a nightmare. No matter even if you have magic, like you can get by with some things. But Chicken Little's foul control ability by just whistling enemies in and making sure that they can't attack you is just—it's so good. It, it the game. I think they knew what they were doing because I think if they gave us no option, this world would just. It would be miserable to play through. <laughs> It'd basically be just spamming Blizzard on the pirates and hoping for the best to play yeah. safer than Chicken Little. Which wouldn't be very fun either. <laughs> uh, but go. yeah, I guess to we're, we just use them a lot. Uh, we do have um, another summit eventually we'll use. It's not only Hello. the Chicken Little story. Oh, uh, Secret Ether, Ooh, cool. Needs lucky luckies. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the, that's not an ether. That's a free ether. <laughs> that's the Great. one fight the lucky luckies <laughs> would in, in effect potentially, but we got the ether anyway. <laughs> uh, we're about to enter a one minute forced fight where we can't speed it up. So instead, we're just going to be farming money for the minute, and we're actually going to grab a synth item uh, during this because we need to grab one synth item in the entire run to be able to get an elixir from the. Uh, Synth, uh, synth shop for free, and it makes sense to grab it when it's not going to waste any time. Yeah, what's crazy is very often this will be the only synth item you get in the whole run. They're surprisingly rare. Or, like, they just don't drop from story-required fights or something. No, they do. Yeah. You can only get synth drops on non-required right. fights. For some reason. <laughs> you would expect that, to have a... Make, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'd expect to have a horde of them by the end of the game, but... Yeah. If you grab all the chests casually, you will right, right. a lot of the time because they're, that's what a lot of the chests are. In case you're wondering why we don't grab very many chests in the run, it's because we're really just looking for pretty much ethers, and that's it. Everything else is like a uh, potion or uh, <laughs> a synth item, usually. Yeah, even against these pirates, Chicken Little's whistle is amazing. It's just it's about getting him to actually do what you want him to do. Is where the struggle comes in. We got uh, what we what we call the medallion fight coming up next. A big, tough, difficult level one fight. Uh, lots of science went into it over the years. Uh, KBM's going to try his best to control the opening. He actually just recently came up with a newer opening, which I assume you're going to do here. Absolutely. Let me focus right, for just so one let's... sec. Okay. Easiest game of my life. Let's go. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. That that was the opening he wanted. <laughs> so I want to quickly explain pretty much the little science behind what KBM did. So at the start of the fight, uh, there's going to be a crossbow part that's just going to try to shoot. And pretty much KBM found an opening because all three enemies can kind of act independently. But KBM pretty much found a 
almost a one size fits all opening where he can guard the enemy and then if one of the pirates what one of the ice, uh, man pirates are coming at you they like to either run or walk and if they are running caveman will opt to go for a second guard and then he can put this himself in the chicken will whistle and we are wanting to kill the enemies pretty much all simultaneously to get a specific spawn pattern for the rest of the fight. And once we get that first spawn, we need to, it's up to us to keep the spawn from killing everything else at the same time for everything to be in the same cycle that we want. So that way, enemies are not spawning on random sides of the boat at any random moment. We know exactly where they're going to be spawned, and that we can pretty much gather them up together. I just want to say that that opening where the middle pirate runs at me, being able to solve that perfectly just now was probably hundreds of hours of work. Wow, yes. those guys were coming for me! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay attention to that. Oh my goodness. Barrel fight's dangerous too, in case. Uh, it looks like a dumb mini game, but it, while it is a dumb mini game, it's also a uh, randomly kills you dumb mini game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is actually another very difficult fight coming up. Um... This is another fight that's been to the lab plenty of times. Um, about to, There's a base generic strat where you could just freeze him and just kind of air combo him, just hit him, just make sure he, ne he never attacks. But there's a faster way that we can do it by forcing his revenge value or hitting his force revenge to make him pretty much do that same lunge that he just started the fight with. We're going to be, we can reflect that with a spell we just got from beating the last world. Um, but Kevin kind of found a little hybrid mix where he's going to be forcing out this retaliation, but he's also going to be able to get some uh, Blizzard to long the way. But with this shot right now, he's trying to make sure Goofy is also alive. So that way he can swap Goofy out for Donald because we cannot replace Jack. And if Jack dies, then the game's over. The fight's over. <laughs> but Kevin's going to be hitting um, Barbosa's Force Revenge. I don't know how and that happened, but gonna, that's okay. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> I, uh, uh, he's just going to be using a limit to get through his Force Revenge, and then he's going to get a stagger, and he's going to be able to just go Wisdom form and just freeze him to kill him. So the funny thing is it's slower than doing this strap, but when you do Blizzard on him, his revenge value goes down to zero, and then you can basically start over. So you can keep him cornered the whole time, and if, if you're casually playing, you can Aether too. But we, you know we don't have to if we do it well. But that fight is a lot harder if you don't utilize Blizzard. Because if he goes into the shadows, you can't stagger him at all. And he has free reign to take out Jack and end the fight. Because if Jack dies, fight's over. Another thing I want to point out is one of the things, one of the hardest things about playing this game and running it is it doesn't matter how good you are. The strats don't always work out 100%. So if you go into this run, if you go into a fight with only one game plan, you're setting yourself up for failure. And throughout many times, you've been seeing us say, okay, we are having these amazing clean fights. It's not some, a lot of these fights are going on like exactly as planned, but there's a lot of these tiny micro moments where things are not going as planned. And KBM is able to kind of just sw switch gears in the like in an instant to be able to hop off one train to go to another to make sure that he still gets to his destination correctly. Backups and, uh, on backups, as we say. Yes. Yep. So you see, we're uh, now using Wisdom Form for movement instead of Valor because it comes with Quick Run, uh, which is actually faster for movement. But um, <clears throat> pretty soon you're going to see us actually intentionally leveling it, but it's going to be in forced fights where it doesn't look like we're wasting time. But we're not doing it because using Wisdom Form is necessarily faster. We're doing it because we want to level up Limit Form to get Quick Run on Sora. Uh, in this game... To get a growth ability on Sora, you need to uh, level up a form a certain amount of times. If you did that with Valor, you would get high jump on Sora, which we don't need or use. But a uh, quick run we want on Sora, because it'll be our main uh, movement that'll be a lot faster than just running. So that's what we're doing in this world. This is a really simple minigame, but I can almost guarantee every top player has died to this at least once in a run. I wouldn't believe someone that says they never died to it in a lo like level one runs. <laughs> but yeah, similar to Mini, say, you can actually I'm... push Abu a little bit, like we were pushing Mini earlier. It's a little more chaotic. 
this is another segment that has had a lot of work done on it. It's very nice to see because this run has just evolved so much <laughs> yeah. over the years. It is crazy, and I love it. It is just it's a masterpiece. But pretty much one of the things here that's going to be different is typically, so I want to point out in the run, we have a certain select number of ethers that we get. So it's been this constant debate and struggle of just knowing where do we want to use our ethers? Where do we want to choose to save time? If we can use an ether here, we can save five seconds here. But if we use an ether here, we can save 10 seconds here. But now, like, it's, so it's a little push and pull everywhere. And this is one of the fights that's gotten ether. And another thing to kind of go with what Biz mentioned about anti-points, um, because Aladdin is dead, even though we went uh, a dry form, Typically, anytime you go into a form, you're getting what's called an anti-point, and if that counter hits five or more, you have a select chance of getting anti-form, which is the kind of the game's way of punishing you for abusing dry forms. And But there are certain restrictions and rules that decide when you get points and when you don't. And one of the points, or one of the things is when a party member is dead, you don't get an anti-point. So KVM was able to actually use an ether, go faster, and still pretty much uh, optimize his being able to go wisdom form, get kills, and not get an anti point all for free, pretty much. So the, uh, yeah, something that weird was, happened at the beginning that was of this fight and kind weird. of threw it out of whack. Yeah. yeah. One of the silver rocks, the, all the silver rocks are supposed to die to that opening reflect, uh, but one of them got away and was able to get a hit in. And I, I know that they do RC. that, but it seemed like he was taking a very long time I, to do his dive bomb. Yeah, see, I, was I was waiting for it. Thing. Like, why is he doing it? <laughs> I would have made the same call because usually it's instant if they're yeah. going to physically attack. But yeah, sometimes they like to just hover and they're just like teasing you, just waiting for you to react early and get punished. <laughs> Pretty much. He, it's hard to catch, but he actually did a fire there on some of the on a group of the enemies. Uh, AOE fire on a group of enemies builds up your drive really fast, so that's how we were able to get wisdom. Oh, I know. Out, I was gonna and do we that. got the level up. Because uh, so, of a route oh. change, the limit's not where I was expecting it to be. But this isn't that bad. It's also because... Probably, maybe both. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this this fight's very dangerous because it's a very small arena. And these wow, guys... I couldn't avoid that at all. Area. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah, that just... As uh, you can see. That's a, <laughs> the growing pains of uh, rerouting. Because uh, normally Comet's not there. Because of, yeah. of that Barbosa strat, it's there, and so I just a little error. Mm -hmm. Just the growing pains of free routing. No big deal. Yeah. What you see here is the littlest thing going wrong on level one just can kill you. Even if you adapt to the situation, it's not a guarantee you're going to win the fight. Mm -hmm. Especially in uh, later fights, that is super the case. <laughs> this game looks, when you're watching the run, everything looks so easy. And then, like, a lot of times people try to play it, and then they're like, oh, well, I just I just die trying to do the same things. And there we go. Happens to runners, too. Like, <laughs> the smallest of a mistake can put you in a very difficult situation. Pretty much, like, KBM had to have already recognized as soon as on that previous attempt that he would have had to go for a finisher to stagger the enemy, to use the RC, to eye frame through it's the attack. It's all right, it's all right. Which he, yeah, it, it's a whole lot. When you think about how complicated this game is, it'll make your head. Hurt. It is all good. And that's the beauty of Runzo. Every time you do this, every time you play this game, something different is going to happen. It's always going to test your knowledge on how to react to things. <laughs> it's just updating this your muscle another... memory is very, very hard. Yes. Yeah. This is another fight where there's a bunch of different ways you can handle it, but the way KBM does it is pretty fast. Uh, you have yep. to cycle back and forth between the Fire and Blizzard Lord, uh, because one will come at you at a time, and when you break one, then the other one comes at you. Uh, we're going to go into Valor here, because it's going to do a lot of damage. Uh, because Aladdin died in the falling segment, he didn't have to force uh, Donald to die here. And I do want to point, because... Um Donald did not die. Kevin was actually used to do a little optimization in the opening to where he starts off Comet for iframes and to just get damage on the Fire Lord. But from where, when he goes into the finisher, which you can end the decide to end limits early, sometimes you can either stop it or in this case go to the 
the finisher of it, which is the Comet Rain. And the Comet Rain, wherever, whenever it starts, where Sora is currently positioned is where it it pretty much sparks. And KBM positions himself correctly at the beginning of the fight to have the Comet Rain not kill all of the little uh, fire enemies that spawn, because once you kill the each of the enemies, the the Lord, the Fire Lord or Blizzard Lord corresponding to them will appear. So KBM pretty much positions himself correctly to not have it kill everyone immediately, but to where he can control the last kill and spawn in that enemy whenever he wants to make the fight super fluid. That fight looks a lot simpler than it is because it looks like you're just spamming combos to kill the Lord every time. But being <laughs> able to be in that position to do that is where the, the subtlety comes in. Yes. This can be right. quite tricky. Uh, the this is actually a, another case of we had two worlds to choose from, but we chose Agrabah first. You know, short answer, of course, uh, it's just faster, but uh, it maybe, uh, honestly, like, I only have a couple reasons I could think of. Do you have any more than, like, do you have a bunch of reasons, Sid, why uh, you would do this second? Yes, because uh, this is something I've also messed with. One of the biggest, uh, biggest reasons is um, you can quick run on base or versus need any wisdom form for movement here um that having genie for the death reads, which isn't super needed is helpful but it's mostly the wisdom form routing you technically don't need finishing leap it is helpful did we mention that uh, level three wisdom is how we got quick run uh, i believe yeah. Chris mentioned it earlier i didn't say three specifically just level like up but yeah, we had to get to level three to get quick run on Sora. Now here's so a new limit. Keep it on form. Yes, dance ball, <laughs> which is another S tier limit. S tier limit for sure. <laughs> um, and a little last end, Ooh. nice. Let's go. Perfect. So I want to point out, KBM ended the limit early. Um, pretty much, kind of, as I mentioned in the very beginning of the run, that little like cinematic or like that screen fade out whenever you finish a fight. He ended that by ending the limit. I do not know why it works, but it also yeah. works on every version of Kingdom Hearts 2, as I believe. And you'll all probably notice but... we didn't do the limits for Jack Sparrow or Aladdin. It's because they are not very good. Yeah. Well, Donald's well, limit, on the other hand, casual. Comet, that was very, very good, as we saw in <laughs> Twin Lawrence. All right, so this fight. This fight can go kind of a lot of different ways. But depending on the child that he first ate, he ate Barrel, which is honestly my favorite. Um, you have to learn to react because every child that he eats has a different set of attack. And how it's just going to respond with its revenge and everything. Yada, yada, yada. Whole nine years. But typically, KBM's going to go uh, get some damage. He's going to go into Jack's limit, Dance Call. And we only want to be using the synchronizations on the limit. They do, the, they do a lot more damage. But... KBM was able to pretty much hit the next HP gate, and he is going to be using another dance call to pretty much just skip an entire phase of the fight. From Typically, he wants to go through all, he eats all three children, and then he will eat all three. And unless if you get a very specific minor glitch, he will always go and do this animation where he's eating all three. And KBM's gonna position himself far away to force the boss to shoot a fireball. He's gonna reflect at him. He's gonna reflect it. And then right there was a good indication of KBM forcing the boss to revenge. He made sure to hit the boss's force revenge value, use a reflect to reflect the retaliation and go into the limit, which sucks in the enemy. So it gets hit by the reflect and he's just able to chain a huge long combo of damage that pretty much one shots the boss. Perfect fight. Last phase. Yeah, that was very yeah. good. Very, very, very good. Um, and that's a fight we could have got anti form in if we didn't manage our anti points. Uh, very important, yeah. With Aladdin dying and Agrabah. Because the current route uses a little bit too many forms to ignore that. Uh, but now we get to go to a pretty awful level one fight. Not necessarily, you know, because it's hard or challenging or anything like that. It's basically almost like an auto scroller fight in a way, but it still can actually kill you. Uh, relatively easy if like a couple things go wrong and because it's an auto scroller it can it's one of the bigger time losses if you die in this fight not only is it a time loss if you die we have certain things that we can do to influence to make the fight go a little bit faster but the attacks that Oogie decides to do 
Why am I using thunders right here, by the way? Uh, so yeah, I was gonna point that out. Cave Demon's actually using thunders because we ended, we use um, Valor form in that last fight just to pretty much get our MP back. Which, if we haven't noticed, anytime you go into a form, you get all of your HP and MP back at the cost of the drive form, uh, drive gauge usage. But Cave Demon's not at three drive, and he wants to be at three drive by the end of this phase, so he can actually summon uh, Chicken Little. And that's going to be used to kind of help keep his party members alive and to keep ourselves alive more importantly from the heartless that he's going to be spawning in this wave coming up and the thunders just add a little chip drive uh recovery for us and it's enough to make us not have to stall more than what we need to so right now we're bringing out chicken little for safety on these presents uh these enemies are pretty scary to have right next to you because they can lead you into an easy death so we bring in chicken little to kind of crowd control them uh kbm kept them alive because there's actually a trick revolving around them surviving uh which will save a little bit of time but it's it's definitely uh, very useful just to survive in general without chicken little you'll just randomly die there the uh <clears throat> one instance in the whole game where fps mode and chicken little is useful <laughs> Which that trick was actually found by an older Kingdom Hearts to find an extra runner. A name of XOBeezy. He Shout out to never Obeezy. fully. Yeah, he's homie for sure. And like that trick he found is just amazing. Like, <laughs> so I was only like, able to do that because the partless were still alive. So that was the yes. whole point. The, so the, this. And that, yeah. I was going to say, this part's the most terrifying with the lightning because we have to hit all these presents back up still with the lightning going around to be fast. And you can actually get clipped out of the the reaction command by the lightning and it can combo you to the back and kill you. So it's he, we have to be very careful not to to try to do our best, basically. Like right there, KBM, and th there we go Oof, again. Okay. He got, he got lucky and bounced out of it, but as you saw, that can just be an easy kill if it decides to clip you a third time. It's not fun dealing with the random lightning hitting you <laughs> oh that's a well, that's a bummer uh i got punished for wanting to heal there but yeah i mean it's fine <laughs> it was also bad luck that he decided to go twice as well <laughs> yeah um so yeah it, the presence being in the middle is obviously the best case scenario for the lightning because you, know, you don't really have to readjust much but uh okay. it's, it's pretty decent oogie still though of course i mean <laughs> A little scary, but we survived, and that's just the way level one goes. Sometimes you're like, well, at least I didn't die. Right, and we, we use Dance Call in every forced fight. All three of them is our main source of damage. Extremely strong limit. If you're playing level one casually and you're struggling here, use that Dance Call. Using it with alternating buttons uh, is the way to do it if you also want to casually get the most damage out of it, because you can't just like mash one of them, or else you might not think it's as good. Uh, we're so, going to... Well, you can go ahead and explain Berserkers. Oh, okay. Um, I was going to even say, even before that, we got to see some little gummy chip tech, where if you lock onto a world, you can teleport by warping to it, pretty much. It's just a little faster movement. But um, this fight, another, like, tons of labbing that was done. Uh, so we're going to be seeing Genie used a lot, but this is actually one of the only instances where we really see using wisdom form genie and that opening is actually very confusing it may look like the enemies are attacking sora but the enemies are all attacking genie because genie is the one who's hitting them right now and but yeah sometimes it the hitbox is just kind of wonky to get past so kvion's trying to sp uh, spawn himself near the corner so when these uh, berserkers come in they're all gonna jump and then he's gonna be doing a little trick Perfect, by the way. Uh, where if you use Magnet and then if you go into Trinity and use Ultima, if you have a... Let me, let me, like let me talk about this. Degree. Hold on a sec. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you get it. When Magnet is applied to an enemy, it deals a little bit of damage. And every time they get bounced out and then back into Magnet, that damage is reapplied. So while the pieces of Trinity, like Major Drive and Ultima, don't deal damage themselves, they do bounce enemies. And so by using Magnet Major Drive, or as you saw there, Magnet Ultima, you can very rapidly bounce enemies in and out of Magnet, and the damage is applied at warp speed, and they just disappear like that. 
and we will use this definitely more than once. So every time you see a magnet and go, us going to Trinity, you'll know exactly what's going on from here on out. Because the the strat the uh, concept remains the same. Ultima or Major Drive will both work with magnet. So it's an interesting debate whether this is a glitch. And I would say that it's not, because the game is still working as intended. You're supposed to take damage when you get bounced in and out of Magnet. They just didn't realize, or it was just an oversight more than a glitch, I think. Because the game is working yeah, as it it's should. it's an oversight. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't consider it a glitch. Yeah. This game doesn't actually take advantage of much for glitches. Right, I always like to say that any percent doesn't have any glitches, but that's not true because of the genie thing, which I just realized the other day. Yeah, true. But but there's almost no glitches at all, which is really rare for any percent, right? I'm not sure yep. what you mean by genie glitch. Explain what you mean by that. That's some cool tech right there. I learned that from Ninten recently. It's, uh, <laughs> w Wisdom Form Thunder in the air bizarrely gives you some forward momentum. Yes. So it's, I just learned something new. Yeah, it's slick <laughs> well. for getting through that. It's pretty cool. Uh, so uh, KBM was talking about the the genie uh, trick where you do just horizontal slow. I mean, we'll get to that yeah, later. We'll that, that could be considered a glitch. <laughs> An exploit, I guess. I think I that's definitely a glitch. Or could they have possibly hard programmed on purpose to reset your combo on a form change? Unless there's some weird uh, potential problem you can run into, probably not. Like if they didn't code it like that. Right. But anyway. So, so there's a lot of walking uh, there. Well, yeah, uh, it was just a lot of movement, you know, optimal movement with wisdom form and whatnot. Uh, right now we're in space paranoids. Uh, really fun world. Uh, I guess I'll let Sid take this one away. Um, well, yeah. this world, I mean, yeah. there's not much to it, which is nice. I'll put it this way. I think it's actually the best world yeah. for level one. Or like, out of all the other categories, this world's the probably the most fun to do on level one and i'll kind of explain more on that later but we start off with this little mini game where a random selected block will be red and we kind of need to hit it with a finisher but for, for the one time reasons, in the game right yeah for <laughs> unknown reasons just popping a form onto that block that spawns makes it appear and then it just gives us free movement and whistle. Right. Fun. Anywhere else in the game, the drive form explosion does not count as a finisher. But right there, for some reason, it does. It's nice that it does, though, yeah. because it's fast and it's a big splash damage, so you don't have to worry about angling a combo or targeting and whatnot. So that big chest that KBM just ignored has um, Stitch, who is arguably the best summon casually. Um, he's not the best in terms of speed, which is why KBM is choosing to not pick him up. But Rex coming against one of the oh. worst minigames <laughs> of yeah. the run. KBM's Older favorite, routes actually use Stitch, yeah. but current route doesn't. He just doesn't, he doesn't speed up enough to be worth grabbing. Uh, yeah, Light Cycle is very dangerous on level one. That first part is actually the only like pretty much completely random part of Light Cycle. This part is more controllable. Because we know like what enemies are spawning and where and whatnot, but in the last phase it was kind of random where they start and where the mm -hmm. the uh, spawns are at. So we had to turn the corner to get a kill. Uh, if you get really lucky, you can end that before even. Uh, once. Yeah, and right here you're gonna see a cool little boost. He's gonna do that a couple more times at least, where we could bounce off the shields. This uh, these enemies designs here are supposed to be a little bit of like rock paper scissors where uh, you, you, you can dash into them or you can attack them, but the shield ones you can't attack. You can only dash into it and stuff like that. Uh, so we take advantage of that to uh, bounce off the green guys, basically. Yeah, we're purposely losing the rock, paper, scissors for our advantage. <laughs> yeah, and he's, he still has to be very careful because, like I said, you it it's not so much the enemies hitting you that will kill you. They will hit you and stagger you while you crash into a wall and die. So that's you can, what we have to be. Yeah, you can die from full in an instant on this. It is very dangerous. That was a clean light cycle, though. Yeah. yeah. Fortunately, <laughs> if you get past that first part, like I said, the rest of it's pretty predictable. So it's very controllable. Right. It is very strange that they made the, the pre-light cycle random and the rest is consistent. I don't know why. Yeah, that's weird. Not only is it random, but... 
and can the enemies can spawn in attack you. Yeah. <laughs> Right, which is just one of the worst designs in this game. That there must have been like some sort designs. of oversight. I don't know. Are you gonna yeah. see me? Uh, That's why we throw out a dash. <laughs> we got a new form a minute ago called Master Form, and I just put a new Keyblade on Master Form, and so keep that in mind because the reason why we do that is a little weird. We'll point it out later. So just remember. Yeah, that. I'll point out. I'll point that out later. So we're coming up this section. Uh, this is typically so we saw Genie. There's an important new trick Genie here, by the way. Wisdom form. But we're going to be using Master G for a lot of the run, pretty much from this point on out. Um, and anytime you get a new form, it also applies to Genie. So we got, we're got we seeing Master Genie before we even seeing Master Form. But pretty much we're utilizing this cool trick by using Genie to gather all the enemies. And then we're going to make sure we don't have Donald and Goofy. We're going to have Donald, like either Donald or Goofy and some other party member. So that way we are only using Solo Trinity. And pretty much we can magnet in you solo journey. And similar to what KBM mentioned earlier, not only do you get a lot of drive when you're knocking, or enemies take a lot of damage from being knocked in and out the magnet, that also is applying to our drive gauge recovery that we get. And yeah, we haven't seen that KBM yet. Was, but uh, yeah. the same idea was just applied there with Master Genie's limit. He's just pushing them into magnet over and over again in addition yes. to its base damage, and so it does an incredible amount of damage, and we'll use that for the entire run. It's so strong. Yeah, it's important to note that Master Genie by himself isn't necessarily that awesome, but paired with the Magnet is what makes him so effective. It's just amazing. This is another difficult fight. It has a very uh, complicated opening. It may look simple, but KBM is going to be doing certain combos and positioning himself. He had to reposition himself to make sure that the hostile program push himself. He always pushes against Sora, so we kind of make sure that he's going to push himself against the wall so he doesn't really move anymore. And now we're pretty much going to be going to Comet using... Um, this is the only, one of the only other limits. Donald's limits, I believe, are the only oh, ones that was freely out of it. So they kind of work with your base combo. You're not just like stuck doing the limits animations. Um, and KBM's using a new strat where he's actually going to be getting a few combos on the boss. And then he's going to be bring back out Donald so he doesn't die. And now he's going to be able to just go into Comet and be able to kill the boss with uh, it, just air combos and triangle presses. It's really funny that this newer strat is almost pretty much like the older strat before the Master Genie ends. It's oh, really? actually very funny, yeah. Yeah, where we let him do the, that side swipe and laser attack. That was amazing, by the way. That was like a very, very frame perfect right, yeah, fight. Yeah. Extremely that was a good, uh, good space paranoids in general. Yeah. Yes. But now we go into what is arguably the scariest part of the run, <laughs> Hollow Bastion 3, as I think most of us call it, the third visit, technically, <clears throat> where we have a bunch of tough fights. Uh, maybe Sid can explain this one. I'm sure you see this strat more than I do. Uh, <laughs> it's a so, weird one. <laughs> yeah. KBM's going to be using Valor Genie. There's another, so this is the first time we're using Valor Genie. And KBM actually did an extra magnet there because that tiny little extra damage from that second magnet is what's pretty much needed to spawn in uh, the mm. rest of the enemies. And Unlucky there. It, yeah, so the Crimson Jazz pretty much just kind of hit KBM right before he was able to get the magnet out. Or, like, after he got the magnet, he wasn't able to pretty much utilize the magnet into the master genie but that's fine even if you get hit there it's okay it's, it's actually rare to get a good fight there it's a tough fight there's okay. another instance of an auto revert giving us all our drive back because we're going to go immediately into another summon here with uh genie again uh dancer is very very deadly uh if they grab you on the ground they one shot you on level one no questions asked uh so we're gonna do the same thing we've been kind of doing lately with genie mass or master genie where we do the magnet into it uh, he's going to... Oh. Okay, so I think what we want to do there is the aerial magnet, because if you land, that's what happens. You get hit. Yeah, so that's why we got to... Yeah, it's, it, it, that kind of shows how precise it is. You want to get close enough to the ground so that Master Genie and Magnet can hit the Dancer, but you can't be too low that you land and then get hit. Yeah. That's and there we got all our drive back just, again. <laughs> it's so much easier said than done, because you need to be low to the ground. And it's easy to like time it too early, it's easy to time it too late, and both sides will give you something you don't want to see. 
So but we're I'm about to see something pretty cool. Uh, yes, we are. In a second, assuming it goes right, which is we're going to utilize what we mentioned about uh, Trinity doing a lot of hits, except for instead of uh, using Magnet, we're going to launch it on all these clones. So he got the clones to a specific count, and now he's launching uh, two parts of Trinity, and then he's just going to unload on Demi. Watch the health. Monstrous. Lean. And that was more due to not only just about using the number of hits that he got on like from when he decided to use it, but where he decided to position himself before he even started the Ultima and then where he was able to uh, angle the major drive to get those hits pretty much out. And Same we got to see here. Limit Form, which we have not seen yet before, but Limit Form is a callback to Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, Sora pretty much, and the limits that Sora has in that game. And pretty much Kevin was able to make the boss retaliate with using uh, Infinity in this game. And from there, we're able to abuse the Trinity Ultima again and kind of just nuke that boss, which is one of the hardest fights casually on level one the first time you play it. Not just that, but this is also considered the worst segment of level one because if there's no retry back in the day before uh, or until after Cage 2. So if he dies here, he has to redo the Demi fight every time. And it's there's a couple things here that can actually one shot you that we really have to try to avoid, or we just we could get combo killed too. So we're gonna try our best. We don't have any tools here from party members, so uh, no group Ooh. limits, no summons. We only have our uh, one drive. We have limit form, and then we have our magic and physical combos and solo trinity. Mercifully, so we're gonna use a combination of that. Yeah, mercifully, I think this is the one fight in the game where shadows can't go underground. Yes, which is very nice. For some reason. <laughs> Leon makes pretty quick work of him, unlike on Bailey. Yeah, that's his redemption arc. <laughs> it's true. He actually does do a good job in that fight. <laughs> All right. FIFA, which is my favorite segment out of FF Fight. And I feel like I might be one of the fewer people who think that way. But there's a specific opening that you can do that spawns in a wave early, which by the time you use your the Rising Sun RC that we're using, pretty much like playing the enemies, we are pretty much spawning in the last wave super early. Wow. Very which clean. <laughs> allows us to like it allows Not a care in the world. Not a care in the world. <laughs> yeah. You can just kill enemies super fast during it. And it's it's just so good. All right, we intentionally got that reaction command there. If you do a thunder on a surveillance bot, it will give you the RC instantly. It's very strong, as you can see. Uh, the morning stars here are obviously the danger. They one-shot you if they drop down on you. I got scared. I didn't yeah. see that you were in my game. I, I, yeah, the same, same. My heart kind of stopped for a second. <laughs> Wait, what scared you? Don't worry about we it. We didn't I'll think you were going to limit there okay. for a oh. sec. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were like charging towards a slamming Morningstar and like <laughs> I was talking and like I was like choked on my like air. <laughs> Just like trying to <laughs> You don't want to die on the last yeah. segment of... Okay, anyway, th this is also... I had it under control, really everybody. These guys don't know what they're talking fight. about. <laughs> <laughs> So this fight, uh, on level one, if it wants you to die, you just die and you don't have a say in it. You can get frame trapped, basically. We do our best to get around it, but as you can see, we're trying to spam the surveillance bot RC. It's by far the best way to get the kills because you can see the kill count uh, going really crazy when we turn the camera like that. And the camera turning is because it helps uh, spawn in enemies to die faster. If we don't turn the camera, we will get far less kills. That's basically the trick there. Uh, we he KBM has to do a really good job of looking around him too to look for windups. Because uh, if any are happening out of his line of sight, he'll just get blindside killed from the back. So it's really tough to pay attention to that while also trying his best. Like right there, that was a pretty cool judgment call he had to make there. Do I go for this RC on the left or wait for the one on the uh, on the right? You know, it's one of those kind of things. Uh, so far, it's going not too bad. We have limit form. He will fall back on if things go south. There was another good judgment call where he waited for the second RC instead of jumped for the other one. The so, fight's trying to kill him. <laughs> I will say the one, there's a couple little saving graces that we have. Using thunder on these enemies will automatically trigger them to do and to get for you to get a snag RC. So that's what KBM was able to use when he saw that uh, he was about to get the wind up. 
you can stop that long animation and immediately get another RC. And something I didn't mention earlier, because I don't want to talk over Biz, but the camera, your camera positioning is super important. Let's go. Thing. And that really was very good. good. Yeah. And I want to point out I, that Kaden sorry. was turning the camera. I'll let you. I was just going to say, I like that Biz pointed out where I made cool judgment calls because I did. There were some really <laughs> yeah, clutch it's calls. Hard to catch those, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Those were very dangerous calls, but he made the smarter one out of the two, the one that meant he didn't have to fall back on limit form potentially. And those judgment calls all work into play on just knowing how to pretty much about what i was even saying earlier about manipulating your camera to kind of get a better gauge on what the enemies are going to be doing and stopping certain attacks from what the enemies are doing and at most moments in that fight kbm was kind of having two surveillance bots trying to do an action so he always he never was just bound to one option and that's where those judgment plays were able to come into play and it's a lot to explain about but and That's sometimes if you make the wrong call and you die, it's just the way the fight works. Sometimes it's yeah. impossible to figure out what's the best option until after you get frame trapped. <laughs> you definitely have to guess sometimes. That In that fight, I don't think I guessed. I made very no, deliberate yeah, that movements. Mm -hmm. uh, That's, yep. yeah. Very happy with that 1k. You didn't even have to think about limit form in that fight. Maybe a no damage? I think so, yeah. Let's go. It's not easy to have happen in a run. It's more level one, yeah. Uh, so this is where second visits uh, start up, where we basically are making a round trip or another round of visits to all the uh, Disney worlds. Um, I, I'll let Sid explain this one. This fight's silly. <laughs> uh, yes, silly is probably the best word to describe this fight and frustrating. Um, this boss, uh, he teleports a lot and we don't know where he's going to teleport. Uh, but we try to stun lock him with Con Donald Common. And k gonna get a lot of damage out on him. He's gonna wait for him to teleport. And when he figures out where the boss is, he's gonna hit him with the Common Rain and try to keep the boss stunned in the Common Rain. That was a very good damage. That was very good damage. I'm really happy. Um, pretty much after the Comet, he's just gonna be going into Master Form, getting some Blizzards to get some quick damage out. And then he's gonna go straight into the Finisher. And he's gonna stop the finisher from coming out and then do a finisher with base combo the boss with Comet oh. and be able to just stagger him to death from here. That was unfortunate. If the boss breaks out, it's fine because then you just go into Comet Rain and then you kill him. Wow. Again. Nice game. Or Unless, if you get unlucky um, like that and it pushes him out of Comet. Yeah, right? but that, the part where I got launched across the room, uh, you know, that's not my fault. Not his fault. We call that yeah. getting yeah. 60 FPS. Uh, that's just life sometimes. It was gonna be an amazing fight, but that was still pretty good. I got a ton of damage early. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the another. No, oh, you can go. You, ahead. Don't, you go. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's another summon there we could have picked up on that last screen, which is Peter Pan. I might be the only level one runner that still decides to pick it up, but we uh, KBM skips it because uh, Genie is used instead, where Peter Pan would be, and it's faster to just skip grabbing the chest. So here's the same property with Magnet bouncing them in and out. And it also builds up mm -hmm. a bunch of drive. So the Magnet Trinity stuff is one of the most important tools in the run. Which we didn't have Magnet until uh, Halloween Town right. afterwards. So that's why we weren't able to utilize this sooner. And mm -hmm. what's going to be a similar concept with an upcoming limit. <laughs> yeah. I just equipped two new abilities. Guard Break and Horizontal Slash. So, Guard Break is a new finisher on the ground. Typically, the only other ground finisher that we got was Finishing Leap, which puts us in the air. We don't always want to be put in the air after a ground combo. Uh, and Horizontal Slash is... It's hard to describe how ability. good Horizontal Slash is for something that sounds really bad. Might be an under <laughs> understatement, yeah. in my opinion. S plus and Omega when, tier. So even right there, talking about horizontal slash, KBM was able to angle that uh, gambler by pretty much angling his combo to where he's timing. He wants to jump, but make sure that the hits connect nice with Sora's a little Ooh. bit lower, so Sora doesn't get his head stuck on the ceiling, and he's able to constantly drag that gambler to the next room. And all these fights that KBM just did were, they were just clean. They were all right, we've mentioned it earlier, but all that was only possible because Changing Genie's form resets your combo counter for some reason. And we'll see that in Overdrive here in a second. 
Yes. This is also probably one of the most technical fights in the game in terms of how many tools we utilize yeah. for this fight to make it work. Um, so similar to like the pirates, this boss gets affected by magic and KBM is going to be summoning Genie. And in between his horizontal slashes, um, horizontal slash has an ability that pretty much allows you to get like a free air combo plus. So you can get one extra air combo with it. And in between the horizontal slashes, KBM is swapping Genie's forms to reset his combo and kind of get an infinite combo loop going on that boss, making it impossible for him to break out. And now, we're going to make sure we immediately stop his reaction command. We're going to shoot two thunders, even though he's not on screen. If we're locked on him, the thunders will hit him. They'll drop the medallions, and then we immediately stop this face from existing. And KBM goes into a nice little combo, and then he goes into a finishing leap, as I mentioned earlier. And he's going to be able to just string that into a comet loop. And right now, KBM is timing his triangle presses for the comet sparks to hit in between the horizontal slashes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. making sure... Oh. I'm going to try to not die here. Okay. Oh, boy. That's scary. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. I didn't know you could die all the way back in that corner. All right. So that was unfortunate. I was one hit away from having four bars of drive and uh, struggled to get that last hit on to get to four bars. Almost made it it's work. It's very tight to get those four bars. That's, uh, that is a knowledge issue. I really think you get hit all the way back there. But I should have just got on the crate. Yeah, it, it, it hits almost everywhere. There's I think if you it wouldn't have had time to get on the crate, I, honestly. Yeah, probably not. I think the way you did was probably the only way it could have worked. You were kind of in a <laughs> very it was an, Yeah, it was a bad situation. spot to be in, just in the center of his desperation <laughs> move. <laughs> to be honest, I thought the first hit was going to kill you. <laughs> I, I have learned the hard way. Only the final hit one shots, ah. but the other ones don't for some reason. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah, we are all I, wiser I now. That. It's super hard. <laughs> yes, we are. So, we, okay, we didn't get to see it on the last attempt, but we're going we're gonna <laughs> to see it this attempt. <laughs> but uh, we're going to be actually seeing use of Master Form. So during the desperation move from the boss uh, that we saw in the last attempt, it actually, uh, we need to make sure that both of our party members are alive. And it needs four drive gauges to use. That's why we're even saying that he needed four drive. Because um, everything that you've seen so far has only been using three drive. Minus limit form, which was a minor use. But this is one of my Kevin's favorite things going. about this game. Yeah. Also, thanks to Ahiran, again, he found this little string of you can just thunder, and anytime you hit the boss with uh, thunder, it loses 50 medallions. And Master Form Thunder hits three times. So every time we're using thunder, it's actually like 150 medallions, and we can pretty much just make sure that this boss doesn't get a chance to attack. Without and that, hard... the fight sucks. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Perfect fight the second time. Right. <laughs> nice job. Thanks. Uh, I, I wanted to point out that it, you have to actually on the fly uh, swap party members out sometimes before you go uh, before he ends his desperation move because if one is close to death you don't want them to die and have to try to revive them so you could just swap them out which yeah. KBM I believe did at that point on the second attempt you can either choose to pop a potion on them or swap them out nonetheless the swapping is better because typically we're limited on potions <laughs> And there's going to be some moments where we need to be using potions anyway. So it's if the more you can avoid using potions, the better. So now, we finally have obtained uh, arguably the best limit in the game, uh, yes. Duck Flare. We, uh, we are going to use things. it quite a bit. <laughs> so this fight, uh, Lock, Shock, and Barrel, we can kind of just immediately kill them by using magnet into major drive and as long as you are holding down the shortcut button you can pretty much get that magnet out before shock has a chance of running away from the magnet spawn and even if she were to get run away the the backup is you would just do a major drive and everything is still happy dandy everything's good i think you had to do ultima or yeah he meant break. i ran into this the other day <laughs> yeah, it was great. Oh, did I say major? I meant Ultima's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you just need to hold L1 while the fight is loading instead of trying to do L1 lock on magnet when the fight yeah. starts. Maybe, yeah. Uh... 
Because I, I... That's something you can always have it buffered. Yeah. There's a couple different ways to do this fight, but the safest I one is... I pushed the D-pad. Oh. You know what? I'm just going to take a death. Yeah. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Let's just show this the way it's supposed to happen. Uh, running a marathon not just that, But it's actually probably faster for him to just take the death here. Oh, yeah. Because doing this fight uh, incorrectly is probably just going to lead to a death later on because there's graveyards that spawn that one-shot you and they're very difficult on level one to handle. Uh, even you know, even with reflect, they can kind of just go right through you if they want. So what he wants to do is dance call here. He gets the reflect dance call, pulls them in while the reflect is exploding, and then he's going to pull them in again and just uh, quickly kill all them and grab all the presents because these enemies that spawn in. If wow, he doesn't... that was incredible. Yeah, that was. I don't see that very often. That he needs to grab those fast, uh, otherwise the graveyards kill you or they pick up the presents and then kill you. So. It's a very precise fight you have to do really quickly. Like, time is super of the essence. It's not just because we want to be fast, it's because we won't survive if we don't do this fast. <laughs> yeah, they're just ruthless. Yeah, there's not really a backup for this okay. fight that I think any of us really have. <laughs> I think I was trying to be a little too then, optimal first time, but it's all good. And then it's like, when you see the fight work, it looks so easy. You're like, how could you ever mess that up? <laughs> and then it's just like one, it takes one wrong input. One wrong input for that. Like, so do we, do we talk about record in this or should yeah, we leave that if, out? I think should talk <laughs> if anyone is interested in watching uh, the PS5 world record for this game, or for this category, I would skip this part because uh, <laughs> if, if I've ever had a mental breakdown on stream, that was it. It's not pretty. <laughs> it's not my best moment. And I prefer if nobody ever saw it. <laughs> the gist yeah. is that well, this, this, this is actually really lucky. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that was almost perfect, I think. That was wow, unbelievable. <laughs> It, it's you know, a mini game that's random, and uh, the record had probably the record for the worst luck. In that, funny enough, I think <laughs> it's pretty close. It got to be close, yeah. That went so fast, we didn't get to talk about much about that. Yeah. But anyway, we got the experiment here. This fight, uh, kind of a tough level one fight, casually too. Uh, there actually is a crash you have to be aware of. And here's Duck Flare, uh, by the way. I think that's the first time we saw it. Yeah, oh, and you'll sure. that, and that's uh, as you can see, it does a lot of damage to do to Duck Flare. The reason is because on the English version of um, 2FM, for some reason, on both uh, PS3 and 4 and 5, it, the finisher just lasts way longer, and we just kind of chuck in attacks during it, and it's just rapid uh, fire damages. Uh, so we stall the limit as much as we can with the RCs while hitting attacks, and then when we launch the finisher, we just go nuts, and it just does so much damage. There's no reason not to do it. And we're going to see this plenty more. Yep, so it's a good thing for balance reasons that we didn't get this really early in the run, or right. probably most fights would look like this. <laughs> yeah. I do want to point out, though, uh, so I wanted to slightly correct you, KBM. <laughs> you said that this was the first time we saw Duck Flare, but I think that's a little incorrect. It's the first oh, yeah. time we're supposed to see Duck Flare. I, I knew it when I said it, but hopefully nobody was watching at that point. I didn't so even catch fine. it. <laughs> I'm just teasing. No, I know. <laughs> uh, well, well, now we're in uh, fun time Agrabah's second visit. Uh, most of this visit is on the carpet. Very little uh, movement otherwise. Uh, the carpet actually has its own uh, combo modifiers. Uh, we try not to use them most of the time because they're bad, so we kind of just rely on magic and our own jumping aerial attacks to handle everything else. Uh, uh, carpet I, controls are not that fun either, but the good news is, I, I don't know if everyone else uh, in the call agrees with me, but I think this is actually a pretty comfy level one second visit. Oh, I love this second visit. I played this a little weird, because uh, I wasn't sure what was going to happen uh, yeah, at the beginning. But you're fine. Yeah, it's fine. That was weird, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Extraordinary I, game. I, 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 know the thought, I know the thought process you had there. <laughs> Boy. Uh, <laughs> as I just said, we think it's the uh, comfy world. Yeah, I was. This, this is one of the. This is probably the most consistent split in the run, and uh, <laughs> boy, that was incredible. I was trying. To I know reflect, you were trying to do but, there, uh, though. You were hoping you would land in time to buffer the. See, next this is one, what you so. would expect, <laughs> where you the rapid thrusters show up properly. But uh, anyway, 
It's fine. <laughs> There's been some silly things in this run. Yeah. Wouldn't. But again, it shows you this category yeah. is so tough because like even the slightest tough, things that happen, suddenly nothing is working. The easy fights can always. Oh yeah, I, like I've crushed the hardest up. fights in this run. <laughs> But the, the silliest yeah. fights. Well, at least you didn't die to Final Fantasy fights, at least. That's a huge W. <laughs> How you handled 1K. The 1K, Hades, P. You, yeah. Your, yeah. Medallion. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Getting the runner on Medallion made me really happy. Because I got to show the strap. Yep. The K fight, Assault Rider, up like fixing everything. <laughs> and then there's like these little moments that are like, these are freebie fights. Sometimes they can just be. It can be difficult because sometimes it's like literally one tiny, one enemy you look, oh, this enemy didn't get in this magnet. If you overthink it, it can just immediately turn to a, like, kind so of a this, mess very quickly. This fight is uh, yet another instance of running into a Crimson Jazz, one of the worst designed enemies you could run into in the game. So we're he's going to try to keep it in magnet here and reflect it into a combo in hopes that it kills it. Because if you let that thing kind of just do its own attacks, you'll probably just end up dying. Yeah, he's a bully, for sure. Very Definitely. Much, yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, that's uh, that's the last time we have to forcibly fight one. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah, I had I've to think about that for a second. I was debating. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like I right? <laughs> That was the smoothest so, lightning switch in my life, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These switches are tricky to target them when you have all these enemies that are like to steal the auto targets. So it's actually kind of tricky to do these well. There's safe strats that you can do, but it's just not. How did I fast. spawn this guy? Too uh, low. You're just trying to prove no big wrong. deal. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you didn't have to kill. <laughs> you, he wasn't forced. You didn't have to kill him. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Oh, are we gonna see a 42? All right. Obviously, one of the Obviously. weirdest room transitions without a cutscene. Yeah, it's yeah, very that is awkward. Weird. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know. I wanted to say earlier that uh, Nintendo made a joke recently. He was getting a really bad present mini game, and he's like, "If there was a fourth kid, he would have showed up too." There's just some <laughs> kid named Jared. And I tell you, <laughs> I laugh about this so much. <laughs> like months, I, like I just that. I keep Box laughing about Carol it. and Jared. Right. Huh? Like I, I want this to be a meme in the community that there's actually a fourth kid in a Halloween town named Jared. And like Lockstock and Barrel are just mean to him and won't let him join the gang. But if, if <laughs> next time I have a run with bad present minigame, I'll be on top of that. Okay, yeah, if, if your present minigame I'll takes too long. Shoutouts. Exactly. Jared will show up. <laughs> uh this is an auto scroller. There's nothing we could do to uh speed it up. So we kinda just you have to kill the enemy still or they'll just end up hitting you. But there's nothing we could do to change the outcome of this. But it makes it kind of comfy because it's relatively easy to just quickly swipe down the enemies. Uh, there's also kind of like a pseudo combo master active in this for some reason. Yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed that typically. Yeah, and I... Just like right there. Why was I able to continue that combo? Who knows? It's just the way it's if programmed. If you had asked me like four years ago to explain why that happens, I might have been able to give you an answer. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks. What? Now, <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, fortunately, it's not important to the run anyway. Yeah, and what's, what's nice here is that it doesn't matter how fast you kill them. You still have to wait. So you're, you're really not under any pressure. Yeah. It takes a while. Unless if you've gone hit once here. Well. Because then these sand dunes, I swear they become <laughs> 10 times harder to dodge. When That's true. It is terrible if yeah. I ever take a hit before them. <laughs> Even though it's so easy to dodge them. It doesn't make it any more comfy, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, so we're going into a, a boss fight, which typically a lot of, I would think a lot of people casually consider one of the worst level one bosses, because if you let him do his desperation move, uh, you're pretty much just flipping a coin whether or not you survive. Uh, however, in the speed run, we've kind of eventually got, I mean, the, the strat's been consistent for a while, but we've changed it a lot over the years. But now it's actually pretty easy, uh, and it's a mostly comfy boss fight. So long as uh, we don't drop combos, uh, you do have to be pretty efficient at uh, buffer jumping aerial combos, which you'll see KBM doing. And then this opening is also kind of tricky. Um, KBM's going to be positioning himself correctly and only pretty much doing one finisher and then going into another combo with just one finisher. And if you're positioned correctly, those spinning buildings will not hit you. 
And we use... Oh, go ahead. No, I, you can go. I was going to say, we used to use Decisive Pumpkin here and do ground combos instead, but we found out that it's just way faster uh, and better just to do air combo spam because it's so fast, especially with Horizontal Slash adding in damage. Uh, he also has HP barriers that are kind of hard to pierce, uh, but Horizontal Slash kind of just shreds right through them. Uh, this fight's very HP barrier based with the strat. Um, and we use, as you saw, we use the reaction command on him repeatedly to stun him and get a lot of damage in. This is, now we're, now he just breached the last HP barrier. If we don't kill him now when he comes back, uh, he'll desperation move us, which is, even in the speed run, if that happens, you're 50-50 surviving. But fortunately, uh, we're good on damage. He nailed all these uh, buffer jump combos, and uh, Jafar is super dead here. Yeah. Perfect fight. I agreed with everything that you said, minus the 50-50 part. It's more of like a... <laughs> 2080. 99 1. Wait, what's the surviving part? <laughs> what's the percent of surviving? 1%. 20? I'd say 20 at best. I don't know. I, 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 I would agree to like 35 40. I know. I'm just. <laughs> For anyone who has had. Who's been unfortunate enough to be in that position, you would understand. Yeah, <laughs> in a run, it will kill you every time, even if when you practice it failing, it, it works. <laughs> Um, so actually, we're going to go back now to Beast Castle. Um, we didn't come here first, even though the same with LOD, because it's just not faster to do early. Uh, and Zaldin would actually be pretty tough uh, to do earlier on uh, without Duck Flare. Yeah. So uh, we're going to kind of manhandle them a little bit better now, hopefully. Uh, and yeah, we boot out Beast this time because Beast Limit no longer really does much for us, even though it, it is it is good here still, but not faster. Another exciting damage. Magnet Ultima. Yep. I wanted to say, uh, for this fight, you really just need to jump to the upright around like two o'clock on a few like use a clock for directions, and the fight should pretty much clear itself out. And I do want to point out, so we did mention that whenever we get a new form, our drive points, our anti points, uh, reset back down to zero. But we haven't had a new form quite a while the last form we got was master form about 20 minutes ago and we're starting to rack up a lot of anti points now one of the good things that we didn't mention earlier though is uh you cannot get anti form if you're not in combat so these are still safe to use but right now we are not safe to use a dry form in a fight unless we are at a position where we can make it that we cannot get anti-form. And one of those situations will be not having both party members alive. So if you're not adding an anti-point, you cannot get anti-form. Yeah, a lot of people don't know there's uh, there's definitely times where you actually can't get anti-form even if your points uh, meet the requirements. It just would be impossible to get. And, that would be, and that's what we're going to be using in the next fight is letting a party member die before we go into a limit or limit form. Trying to wait for that third yeah. dragoon to join yeah. us, but that's life. Yeah. That's okay. Mm. Sometimes the show must go on. Yeah. You can't wait for everyone to show up. <laughs> we lose our drive here, but it's not going to matter because we're actually, uh, we're, we're, we don't need it. Uh, well, we need it, but we don't need it immediately, and Duck Flare is going to help us build it up really fast. Yeah. Uh, Zaldin's a casual killer, uh, as many people know. Uh, people yes. get walled here even not a crit if they're mashing, so he's very dangerous to, uh, in level 1. So KBM has actually... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I... Man, this has been a strange run. Somehow... Yeah, that was weird. I don't... Somehow I... Input. We're on the other side. Yeah, I'm just gonna let that one go. That was bizarre. To note, he could have. That's one of the fights Mickey can show up in, and we hit the 80% chance this time around. Uh, but it's not faster. You'll probably just get frame trap killed anyway when you mm -hmm. get revived. So there we go. I want to point out, KVM is using specific combos. Uh, Kind of force Zaldin to retaliate when he wants. And then he's going to... Uh, Zaldin's going to be a... Uh, there we go. Make okay. this fight much That's a good scarier. Force. Yeah, I don't think uh, I can reflect now. You should still be fine. So in this point, as I stated earlier, it's not safe to use a dry form, but Donald is dead. So we kind of forced Donald to be dead here. 
and then Kaven's gonna go little form to get his HP and MP back. And during these uh, jump reaction commands that he's using on Zaldin, he's gonna be timing a duck flare and all these triangle presses. And he's gonna be able to go from that the jump sequence into a combo string that should be able to kill the boss. And that was very nuanced strat, but he nailed it at the end. We're we're doing it like Sid was saying. It's very nuanced at the end to do that specifically, so he doesn't break out. And Very I want to point out, timed. Zaldin made that fight much scarier than needed yeah. to be by not immediately going into the jumps. It's really hard if to explain, damage, but yeah. I can I can try to explain it really fast. But but let's get into the Riku fight. Over damage him. I just want to say that he can hit his desperation move at any moment if you over damage him before you're stunning him. And, and his desperation at, move yeah. isn't really a problem to dodge. It's just a big time waster, and then the cleanup after is not simple. <laughs> But now Riku. Oh, so Arguably this fight. Arguably one of the worst <laughs> fights. He, he's pretty... Fight. <laughs> so this is one of those bosses where he just super armors through everything. And yes, that's Riku, by the way, in case anyone's confused. Uh, he just super armors through everything. We try to work around it best we can. Uh, he can kind of kill us kind of easy if we let him hit us more than once. Like that, half damage gone in a second. Yep. Hopefully we don't get frame trapped. That was he cool. is choosing not to do anything, which is really wasting my time. Yeah, and there's yeah. something I can he actually react to. He doesn't have to attack Sora either, which is We, we try very... to get him... Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say that the boss, you don't know where he's going to attack. You don't know what attack he's going to do, and you don't know where he's going to choose to attack. He might go to Sora, he might not. And you typically just need to kind of react to what he's doing and try to optimize your damage it, it's very it's a very wonky fight it's hard to tell if that fight's slow without dying obviously but i mean it, it, it's not as bad as it looks it's just annoying when he dashes a lot and does nothing and you have to kind of chase him down <laughs> yeah. and again to note kbm was not in combat so this was informed as just for movement bases got an excellent Purposes, reflect I mean. bug there at the end if you guys saw that i did see that uh it was hard to point out in the midst of yeah. everything. Uh, yeah, pretty there's much. A lot going on. What KBM is talking about, typically, whenever you reflect any attack, it will proc a, just a AoE splash damage. And the enemy, Riku, hit Sora with the reflect while the reflect was out. But I believe if an, an attack hits reflect on frame one when it comes out, it does not trigger proc. I think that's what happened. All I know is the reflect bug is because of 60 FPS. Uh, it never existed back in 30 FPS land for this game, anyway. That is interesting. I don't know the specifics of it otherwise. But, um, <clears throat> so that last fight, pretty clean. If, uh, I don't know, I, I think you just did Ultima, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's all it should need. Sometimes it doesn't kill everything, and then you need to do a little bit of extra cleanup after, but it's nothing crazy. This fight's quite dangerous with the snipers. Uh, we have to be very careful when we decide to do our magnets. This last uh, snipers being annoying. Yeah, that was weird. This is, is kind of dangerous, but also not ex fully dangerous because we still have options. But it, it's bad really luck that they separated good. like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mercifully, we get the we got our MP back here, which is nice. All right, so we're coming up against the last uh, second visit boss, Storm Rider. And even though this boss has like the lowest battle level, it's probably one of the hardest. It's one of the tightest strats. Uh, so KBM's going to start up the fight with two blizzards, which can only be done if you have blizzard on your shortcuts. Um, if not, you lose a little bit of damage. Not too big of a deal. KBM's going to be doing specific combos to get some reflex and to get the duck flare co combo out. And just to try to optimize his damage. You don't want to over damage him, but then you also don't want. I don't think you can really over damage him on level one. But you want to be positioned correctly to where when you do the duck flare, you're actually hitting his two side horns. The and shoulder horns, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many people know about this casually, but if you break the shoulder horns, you he can no longer fly. And you get he this. Gets, yeah. He's crashing down, and we're just going to be on his back. We're going to actually make a callback to using Wisdom Genie to just kind of be using it in between our combos. I love Something this strat because when I first came to the community, everybody thought Wisdom Genie was just worthless garbage. And uh, finding this strat made me really happy. 
because I, I like Wisdom Genie. And it's actually really powerful in the right situations. Which I think we use it twice on the run. Which would be Berserkers in this. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Pretty clean. I wanna... Yep, perfect fight. So that fight, even though KB made it look simple, it's kind of difficult. And even in the point of managing all the resources, something very important to note if for anyone who does want to run level one, when you're doing that fight, keep track of how many times you use Wisdom Genie because every time you use him, you are stopping your MPU from recovering. That's very That's important. That's make that yeah. ending not possible. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take another break here. As soon as Chip and Dale are done telling us the updates, <laughs> I'm going to count it down. So, Etchy, get ready. Count it down. All right. Three, two, one. As soon as Okay, there we go. <laughs> awesome. Misjudged it a little yeah. bit. <laughs> so yeah, for those who don't know, we usually like to take breaks here during our GQ Hot Fixes, give everyone a, uh, a chance to stretch, get some water. Uh, take, a, take a moment to breathe after how intense and uh, stressful this run has been. KBM doing one of the hardest I'm doing possible just Kingdom Hearts here runs here. So um, We'll be back very shortly before we go to that quick break, though. I wanted to give a couple announcements. Actually, I just wanted to give one main one here. If you're not already following KBM, go follow KBM. Uh, KBM Studios on Twitch. If you just hover over his name on the title, you'll be able to follow him really quickly without even having to lead the stream. Uh, Big Sid and uh, Bizkit also do a lot of streams and speedruns and stuff. You can follow them as well. But we're going to go to a break. Don't go anywhere. And uh, you're not going to want to miss how uh, intense this endgame gets. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome back everybody to the GQ Hotfix. We are doing a World of Record Recap special. KBM Studios here, aka KBM, just recently got World Record in Kingdom Hearts 2. Final Mix HD, critical level 1, any percent for the PS5. So he's doing uh, that same run, but on PC modded here. Basically just means he's skipping the gummy mission sections that are just boring auto-scrollers. Uh, we're getting into the end game here, so things are getting pretty serious. But So before we get into the really intense strategic end game here. I want to just give a couple quick announcements. One is that GDQ is hiring. If you have experience in social media creation and want to help out at our live events, be sure to go to gamesonquick.com slash jobs to apply. And if you have missed out on any of our other hotfix shows or past events, that could be the mainline GDQ, some of the specials, some of the one-offs, um, the, the individual hotfix shows, be sure to check out the VODs on youtube.com slash games done quick as well. Subscribe there, check it out. A lot of good content there right now and in the future. So make sure you uh, you keep an eye on that. And I think I'll throw it back to KBM so we can get back to this run. Okay, let's do it. Three, two, one, go. All right, so <clears throat> final Twilight Town visit. We got a couple fun fights coming up. We just got to run there. Uh, we have what we call the Mickey fight, even though we don't fight Mickey, and then the Axel fight. Uh, in the Mickey fight upcoming, uh, we're going to use a lot of Master Genie. It's a tough fight because Mickey has a finisher that likes to knock enemies across the arena, so we're going to try our best to uh, work around that. <laughs> and by try, we mean hope. It also scary movement here, <laughs> technically. <laughs> We did it! Better than record! Let's go! <laughs> that, so I, that sniper one-shots you if it hits you. Right. That is actually true. <laughs> I want to point out that we've been... So we've just been saying, oh, we're just going to use Master Genie here. Master Genie, like, we're Magnet, yada, yada, yada. But the bigger important thing to note is that every enemy reacts different to how Master... Like, how, where they're positioned to the Magnet depends on how well Genie's going to work on them. So a lot of these enemies we saw, we had to be far away from them to drag them in. But on these enemies, we need to be on top of them. And so it's just a lot of balancing, knowing when, like, just that was really how good. You position yourself. Oh wow! Was clean. He, he, Mickey almost I've ruined seen. it, but I don't know if he did the RC on purpose. Yeah, I knew that. it was coming. He had not okay, done yeah, it for yeah, a while. Good, so, good uh, call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was very cool. Yeah, that was perfect. Uh, those are you, you can't just throw out Master Genie either in that fight. You actually do have to be relatively good at timing it and knowing where to move and stuff. Uh, and next we got the we got a little cool Master Fern trick coming up in the fight, and then we have uh, uh, the Axel fight. What strat are you doing? I'm gonna do one? the DP strat. Okay. Oh, okay. oh reflect right. leap. 
Thanks for that, one. Goofy. That was helpful. <laughs> <laughs> the Axle fight's very dangerous. You have assassins that can just explode one shot you, uh, and they go after Axel. So if he decides to rush right next to you and they explode on him, then you die out of your control. Oh, we try our best. You. To be, oh, oh. Yeah, they could. Both, yeah, and both are one shots on level one. I love that strat. That's a beautiful strat. Yeah. Beautiful strat. This is a bit of an older strat than the thunder strat that's newer, but depending on your ether count. Okay, that is to... as unlucky as possible. That's fine. So I want to point out that KBM is specifically choosing that dusk at near the right of one of the starting points, because when that dusk dies, it's going to trigger the spawns to have an assassin come out. There are certain enemies that will, when the dusk die, it'll have another dusk come out or one will be an assassin and so you've got to know enemies who will spawn which ones and this is pretty much a why is there just one guy left? almost a good fight <laughs> you, i saw that fight. call you made where you didn't you knew you didn't have enough mp that was a good call yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Almost, was finishing leave almost that was good but it almost ended up being too good that yeah he didn't have enough mm. drive to go live it for him when he could have made that fight he could have ended that fa fight faster had he just had enough drive right which, that was being left with only one enemy at full HP is very bizarre. Uh, yeah. slowed me down a little bit. Better than dying. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, this is probably the hardest strat I'm going to do today, so I'm going to focus for a second. All right, he wants us to be silent, so I'll be silent during it. Let's go. Whew. Nice. Nice. Perfect. Nice. Uh that's another instance of uh, we don't have as many tools because we don't have a party, so we have to work with what we got. And there's many different ways to do the strats for this fight. There's like many different strats. Uh, that's the one KBM prefers, and it's pretty fast, but also very scary. Very precise reflect times. You can't just mash reflect there. You'll right, get hit right. out of it every time and die. <laughs> and even where Roxas is positioned from you, if he's in front of you or if he's behind you, determines on when you need to time your reflects. So, and KVM had to do both patterns. It's very minor timings, but I'm gonna it's such check. a tight strat that it can, yeah, it's just scary. <laughs> Well, we're yeah. finally going to see uh, Antiform for the first time intentionally. We, the Keyblade we get from Roxas forces out Antiform, essentially, to put it simply. Because uh, now we want to lower our Antipoints so we can safely use Drives uh, from here on out. So we're actually going to do it twice, because each usage of uh, Antiform, I believe, is negative five points to your counter that the game keeps track of. Uh, we're doing this trick here again where we get our Drive for free with the Magnet Ultima on the Dragoons that spawn there and died immediately. And then there's our second Antiform. We're going to get our drive back in the next room because we were abusing that trick where we get the free refill. Uh, and then we're doing a little bit of shopping for ethers and we're getting that free elixir finally. He put back on Hero's Crest, or is going to, and then we're going to go into Zigbar. Uh, well, let's Sid take it away on this one. This is a very complicated uh, fight. It's a very complicated fight. I want to say one last thing. The only reason why he still was got anti-form, even though all the enemies were dead, was because his command was still yellow. And force and fights... Mob fights, your command turns yellow, and force fights, your command is red. At any of those moments, you can get anti form. But now I'll go into Zigbar. So, this fight. <laughs> Zigbar will like to retaliate after three rounds of bullets that he shoots. That was two, there's gonna be three. He's gonna start reloading. When he's reloading, we're gonna go into Duck Flare. KBM's gonna be doing certain specific combos, pretty much, to time the rocket RC from in between his finishers, to stagger him correctly, and then. He's gonna pretty much go into a Mega Duck Flare. He's gonna reload again, and during this time we're gonna go into Valiform, but not over damage him. But we wanna get our MP and maybe our HP back, depending on the situation. He reloads again, and as long as KBM stuns him correctly, 
fight. That was a little strange. That spinning rocket was scary. That's, yeah. that's why I kind of hesitate at all. <laughs> yeah. There's many, many different ways this fight can go wrong. It takes a lot of testing practice and learning yes. to figure out all the ways it could go wrong. It's just, it looks easy, but it's just experience because there's so many ways that fight could just like screw you over. But it was, that was well done. That was basically exactly how the strat roughly should go. So now we're going to our next fight, Luxord, which is uh, it's essentially kind of like supposed to be a mini game fight. There's no HP bar; it's a time bar instead. The more hits you take, the faster your time bar goes down. Same for the opponent. So our goal is to basically uh, hit them as much as possible. Uh, to try to quickly win the fight, but that's a little hard to do, so... You, it's it's gonna be weird, the way the fight starts. I do want to point out that this is probably one of the easiest fights, casually. But probably, if not the hardest fight in this do. This is the fight where your knowledge is really tested, because it will never go the same way every time. I like this opening strat too, where you do the reflect slap shot reflects. That's only possible because of combo master, if, which we got after Roxas. So you're able to basically protect yourself into an attack and then continue the combo and do uh, basically two reflect splash damage. That That's the goal me. there. It's fine. He's going to abuse Force Revenge on the ground. You get one of two outcomes, which there he got the jump. The other one's the mini game, which we use for a free reflect. We don't actually do the mini game here. And the reflect kills the cards usually. He's giving bad luck here though. You don't want if him to jump a hit. lot. If they get hit by all three splashes of the reflect, they die. <laughs> that reflect slap shot intentionally makes his RV perfect so that uh, we don't have to worry about timing our combos like really well in the air and whatnot. He'll start retaliating before the combo is close to over. So, one thing I want to point out, we talked about revenge value and force revenge and all of that. However, one thing I did not mention is that typically when enemies use their force revenge, the RV goes all the way back down to zero. Um, but in this case, that doesn't always happen for all fights. That's why Roxas can be scary with, depending on what strategy you do. And even with Luxord, uh, every time he's choosing to jump or minigame, his RV Mostly when he does the mini game, I should say. His RV is not going all the way back down to zero. It's not Good resetting. Fight. So he's going to be retaliating slowly but surely earlier and earlier and earlier. And that slap shot that we do is kind of a like a safe keep way of just keeping track to make sure that we know he's not going to retaliate at times we don't want him to. That was a very specific desperation move skip on Luxord. Uh, we had to do, he had to do it at pretty much exactly there. It doesn't save like a terrible amount of time or anything, but it's still worth going for if you have the opportunity. And uh, it looks cool. Yeah, we got Saix <laughs> here. Saix actually is a... I like the strat a lot. It's actually considered a pretty consistent strat. Um, I know we're in a marathon setting, so I shouldn't say that, but outside of marathons, we, you know. <laughs> uh, we're going to abuse uh, Duck Flare as usual. Um... But it's, you know, it's very specific because we have to make sure his Berserk bar isn't filled before we do our uh, final Duck Flare. So we, we want to be able to skip his Berserk phase so we don't have to knock him out of it. So everything here he's doing is very specific to be able to keep staggering him, but also letting him retaliate into Reflex to do more damage. And it's very good item management. You probably also, uh, if anyone noticed, he put on Monochrome. It has item boost on it which allows uh, ethers to restore more uh, MP. Clean fight. Very clean. Very clean. And the main purpose, and that's another cool thing about level one, because typically in other categories, we can't do that because we need the stats. We need the stats for strats to work and yada, yada, yada. But for level one, we know we're going to be doing the same damage anyway, typically. Minus the finishers. However, in that fight, we're not really using finishers. The main damage is Duck Flare. So instead of needing to use three ethers, or in that, or in other cases, at all, an elixir to get our MP bar back, we can use two bar, two ethers, make that fight much nicer to manage. The good news about these snipers is these ones now we have more HP than we did in Twilight Town Three, and they're not that much stronger. So they won't sh one shot you if you uh, if they hit you, but it's still kind of scary. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So f fun fact: uh, enemies, how we have a damage cap and stuff, and damage pool that we can do. Enemies have a damage cap on you. So the snipers are the same snipers here, and the ones in the woods earlier do the same damage. 
we just have more HP. Right, which is uh, something that gets missed a lot. Having the extra HP is a big deal. <laughs> yep. Allows us to survive hits that uh, normally would kill us. Yeah. So these uh, HP uh, gains we get from four story fights helps a lot in the run. All right. Do you want to explain something this or do you want me to? Eh, I could take it. Uh, I, uh, the way it's a very precise uh, strat he's going to do here with more combo master where we're going to do uh, more reflex slap shot reflex combos it has to be pretty well timed because you can't uh, if you time it incorrectly he'll get out of it uh, so we use that to uh, abuse getting two reflex every combo on him every time he retaliates we can't do this forever though eventually uh, he'll break out of it so right now KBM's forcing him to attack because now it wouldn't work anymore but the strat is basically going to be the same where we're still doing that uh, reflect, slap shot reflect, and then uh, we'll clean up. We, we have solo Trinity, and then we also have limit form to clean up. Uh, we need to make sure uh, that we. Okay, I did the combo attack. Please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's yeah, go! Perfect, perfect, uh, perfect final world. <laughs> <laughs> I love it! <laughs> I kind of wanted those. to let that play out there because I was like, "This is going pretty well." Yeah. <laughs> if you if you get to end the fight on the long combo, that is so cool. Yeah. I was like, when I saw you drop, not drop, but he, you opted for him to go for another teleport. And I was like, if he gets the long combo, I'm gonna like scream <laughs> with joy inside. <laughs> yeah, that, there's not much else to say about that fight. But now we enter final fights, so we have you know a stretch of mob fights to go through, and then bosses, uh, and a l really long, fun mini game. <laughs> that was so sick. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say, this game's final fight sequence, out of any out of the games I've played and ran, this like this ending sequence just always feels so special to me. <laughs> like it, it just it's so exhilarating and i'm excited to see kbm you know, i like a lot yeah i like it there. both the uh, just casually end in a speed run most of the final boss fights really cool very scenic music yeah for sure <laughs> it's so good so i want to point out uh one thing this is kind of a newer find i believe um typically you'll see a lot of runners and different categories and stuff will have swap out Riku for Donald. But KBM opts to swap Donald out here because sometimes on that first reaction command that you just saw KBM use earlier, Donald will take damage. And it might not seem important now, but it may end up affecting you in about three to four minutes from now. <laughs> so KBM found a little fix to make sure that he can never fall, like come across that roadblock. Anymore. I never even noticed that. <laughs> Uh, this is so something about that's interesting about Master Form Magnet that he just did there before reverting is Master Form Magnet lasts a long time, which you probably might have saw on the the uh, cylinder se sequence. Uh, that gives him enough time to do some damage to these enemies before going into this uh, Magnet uh, Major Drive and Ultima. And, and we just wiped out. The, it didn't look like there was like a big wave there, but we just wiped it all out by doing that. Uh, so now we got to damage this core a bunch. There's a the little trick there to get this to show up sooner with uh, Master Genie tech in there to continue our combo. This uh, prevents the claws from coming down uh, too fast, because if you just keep wailing on that core as normal, uh, the claws, the second the barrier comes back up, the claws will start coming down. Those are one shots, uh, which are very dangerous to deal with. Beautiful play there. Yeah, that was very good. And this is also more of a newer shot, I'd say. I say newer, but it's been around for a couple years now. But. I will say KBM also, to make this strat work, he t he purposely took the hit from the Berserker near the beginning, and that actually gave him enough height for the Magnet to catch all the enemies, for everything to be getting hit, and for him to set up the good angle to be able to nuke the core with the Magnet Ultima. And so KBM's going to be fighting, this, we call this Armor and Tempest 1, and he's going to be using an elixir. I knew I was going to drop it in the marathon. All right, I'm going to take a death and okay. do it again. <laughs> it's, uh, this is a really, really difficult strat, and uh, I just I just Very missed difficult. the D-pad with my thumb. Let me give this another try. Like, the first time I tried to learn this fight, I was stuck doing it for about two and a half hours. <laughs> it's very difficult. But KBM's going to want to actually 
throw an elixir before he even while he still has MP, but then he's gonna use a duck. Man, I all right, hold on. Let me give me a sec here. Okay, <laughs> let me let me get a, a no commentary for a second. Right, Not that I'm blaming you, but it's a. Uh, let me just make sure I can get this. Because I, I do want to show it. Like this is still winnable, but I just want to show the strat. This is really cool. There you go, Zebnus. Don't proc, don't proc Mickey. <laughs> no. There we go. Nice. You guys can talk. So, <laughs> if you guys didn't see, KVM had to do like a whole bunch of inputs on the D-pad <laughs> to make sure he can actually... Because he doesn't have the elixir on his shortcut, which means he has to go down to his item menu, go to the elixir, make sure he's not just mash. You can't just be mashing your button either because you have to scroll down to Donald. And then he has to cancel out of that menu and then flip the command menu to the other side, go to the limit side, and then proc the dog flare all within about like less than half a second. It's very tight. It's and hard. It's hard. While you're still, and it has to be in the middle of a reflex, it's, it's a whole lot that goes into it. <laughs> But that fight's one of the more, like, just and there, there's beautiful... There's a, a like, very bizarre chance. small window where the game won't let you use an item or a limit. Uh, just... For, there's, like, a cancel window, a you-can't-do-it window, and then a normal use yeah. window. And uh, sometimes you get stuck in the you-can't-do-it window. It's, it's really tight. And that typically happens because the game doesn't want you to try to do things too fast, but you need to go super fast, and it's kind of like... It's a... it's... I promise you, anyone who wants to try that, good luck. <laughs> it takes a lot of time to get that down. Well, this is a glorified gummy mission, so yeah. this, uh, <laughs> this one we don't have uh, skippable in the mod. It does require a level of, like, a higher level of skill, <laughs> so... It's pretty straightforward. We're building up energy to blow away parts. So right here, he's going to launch a whole energy attack. And it's going to basically wipe it out. And then we'll build up another one and so forth. Uh, there's tech behind it where uh, you need to, you know, you need to have good movement. You need to obviously time to get your uh, energy back and whatnot. And we also uh, swing around uh, attacks to knock enemies into the dragon. It's basically, though, just like a, it's almost an auto scroller. The time variance here isn't too much, even if it goes a little wrong. Unless you die, then you lose like four minutes. <laughs> right. That's, I mean, there's not much else really to talk well, yeah, about. I mean, that, that other... enormous wave of missiles is tough to deal with, right? Because you can't dodge here. I mean, you can sort of move out of the way, but your best option is to try to parry the missiles with the yeah. Keyblade, and in my opinion, the best thing to do is to have them coming down at you and then use this overhead swing, because that's pretty much a guaranteed mm -hmm. parry. So that's what I'm going to do here. Check this out. Okay, well, of course not. <laughs> you know, obviously not, right? I think too many of them were low anyway. <laughs> so obviously one not. thing we didn't really mention is that Sora's kind of getting all these constant finishes out due to the use of Combo Master, and he's also using that by alternating attacks with Riku. And that's kind of what's making that possible. Right, you can just sort of spam finishers, which is weird. But it's similar to how you cancel your combos with Genie and you change forms. Mm -hmm. It also works even with normal hits. You can prevent yourself from doing finishers, right. by the way, if you want more parry frames. So this fight is a, another fight that, as I mentioned earlier about Revenge Fire, I know we keep saying it, but this fight has a... The boss has a different force revenge value every phase. <laughs> so KVM's gonna knock down two bars and get one little hit of damage. He gets knocked away. And during this little sequence, we're gonna be looking for buildings that are not moving. Make sure we don't run into the buildings that are moving because they will one-shot us. And once we do this RC sequence, KVM's gonna buffer an arrow dodge and immediately cancel it with a glide to get the glide... Uh, when you aero dodge and go into a glide, your glide's at max speed. Normally Sora has to accelerate into it, but if you aero dodge before the glide, he starts doing it fast. And if you gain enough distance between you and Zemnis, he will skip a whole laser sequence. And we kind of well, use that every time. That's a really What's cool, cool trick, here is, but it's hard to explain. I guess you guys can keep going. I was gonna say, uh, you just you we actually have all our growth abilities here, whether or not you learned it. You get dodge roll and quick run and glide on 
and the high jump. It's pretty cool that they give you all the growth here, whether or not you have it. Can't yeah. believe that worked. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm surprised that building didn't fly away. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little close, but it looked like he was... I, I wasn't really actually that way. <laughs> Fun fact, uh, on the HD version of this game, sound effects drop a lot in this fight, or just in general. So yeah. you don't get to hear some of Zemnis's, uh yells and quotes and whatever. And another fun fact is on the English PS2 version. I think maybe it works on Japanese as well, but in the, Engl in the PS2 version, you can actually go behind Zemnis, this chair you can kill him from there. Really? Never seen that. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm surprised I never heard of that. We got the final fight here, so uh, we could just spam uh, RC the whole time here, but we want to do damage in between this sequence that's almost automated, so he's going to do a lot of safe, well-timed reflects in between these RCs to do a lot of damage. As you can see, uh, sure what being there. off at all is a lot of damage. <laughs> This fight's actually very dangerous. Oh, dangerous. <laughs> a lot that can just sn uh, snipe you. Uh, you get to see uh, Riku's limit here for the one and only time. It's pretty good. does a lot of damage. There's different ways to do it, too. You can choose to extend it longer. Mm -hmm. So typically, KBM's going to try to get as much... Well, he's going to try to get him close, uh, knocking four blocks of HP down. And now we're going to try to get a nice little combo string of damage with Limit Form. So we talked about RV and all this stuff. The one cool thing about Limit Form is every time he does Arja Canyon, as long as he's not doing the very last hit, it adds zero revenge value. So you get almost a, like a whole half bar of damage for free, pretty much. We can use that extend to get to skip a face push where he makes it really hard to hit him by spamming lasers and then we kind of make him go to the end sequence and we pretty much just kill him from here. Maybe I'm just going to get a reflect on him and the next reflect should be GG. Yeah. Nice. The game had to hear me. The game had and to this, hear one last time. And this is one of my <laughs> favorite end game sequences of a game. Right, it's odd. <laughs> Ever since Rando came around, people are like, what if we had laser dome skip in any percent? I don't understand why he would want that because it's like the coolest thing in the world. I love yeah, doing this. PB, it's yeah. very satisfying. Absolutely. Your heart gets to rest. You get yeah. to feel the blood flowing through your body. Like, watch anybody's PB and watch how they're acting during this. Like, it's it's peak, right. man. It's peak. Yeah, like, no one that has ever just, like, blank face is like, all right. Like, everyone's like, <laughs> you, you let it all out at that point. Yeah. It's so good. Biz doesn't, because he still worries about inputs getting dropped. Because if Riku dies there, you lose. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I mean, well, it's, it, a lot of times the level 1 Riku's at 1 HP in Laser Dome yeah, a lot of true. the time. But, fun fact, you don't have to mash. Uh, it Actually, you can alternate it like 1, 2, 1, yeah, 2. That's yeah. about the speed you need to mash it at. But I don't know anyone crazy enough to risk that. So. <laughs> Absolutely not. A lot of us just go nuts on the controller and hope, for, they hope it doesn't drop inputs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever had inputs dropped there, but the fear is is there. I have seen someone. I've seen a couple people lose reps. Right? Oh, <laughs> that's got to be the worst. Uh, time's it coming up, by the way. Watch, if anybody's but... keeping track, time's coming up. Yes. Right about... Time. No. Nice. Good. Really good Did marathon you? run. Yeah, that, that was great. Final yeah. world, the final world... The world that never was was very fast. That was just... <laughs> Mm. Nothing like went wrong. It was super good. Oh, good. That was so, so, so. I'm, I'm glad I nailed that Roxas strat because it's. Yeah. I practice it all the time, but it, it is a total skill check. So it, it feels good to show up. I wouldn't be too sure and you didn't get it for free either. You had the, the spinning rocket. Oh, on. the spinning rocket. <laughs> oh, man. Luxord was a little. Not too bad, but you it know. It was annoying, yeah. Zemnus won, like, working everything out there. That was. That, was that Zemnus kill was so good. Yeah, good run. Good run. The important <laughs> stuff was amazing. The silly stuff was silly. It's all good. We had some laughs. <laughs> to showcase why the run is tough, though, yeah. which is always nice to see. Really happy about it. Uh, awesome. I don't know if so, yeah, any any shout outs. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Echi for uh, oh. offering me this slot when it opened up. Uh, I was, you know, dream come true. This isn't a real GDQ, but it's, it's close enough. Very, very happy. Thank you all for watching so much. Thanks for the opportunity. I hope you enjoyed the run. Big shout outs to Sid and Biz. Uh, and to Nintendo and VG for running level one. 
for the uh, last few months. We uh, really pushed this category really far. And just to everybody who's supporting me, I, I love you guys. Thank you so much. I always figured I was better at stuff than you. Yeah, I, I give shout outs just to the speedrun community uh, for Kingdom Hearts in general. Uh, most people are very nice and easy to get along with and are willing to help you if you want to learn. Uh, for level one, uh, you know, KBM, Nintendo, VG Master, uh, and Sid, they're all willing to throw strats at you and bounce ideas. I live uh, in this man's heard. DMs. I don't know if he likes it, yeah. but I'm in there. <laughs> You've got to well, see the strat is. That's why you made a group now so that it's more than just me. <laughs> But it's very helpful, so because then you learn why things went wrong and what we could do to improve, and it's evolved the run yeah. over the years. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much again, KVM, for running this again. If you want to follow KVM, twitch.tv slash KVM Studios. If you just hover over his name in the title, you can just click the little heart and follow him very quickly. Uh, right. Huge shout out again to Big Sid and Biscuit for also lending their their commentary prowess for this run. If I can jump in again, and sorry. Yes, I, go ahead, I actually just finished uh, my PhD, so I'm going to be playing this game a lot. So if you want to watch <laughs> Kingdom Hearts uh, in the next month month or two, I'm going to be I'm going to be streaming a lot. So yeah, I hope to see you guys Dr. there. KBM. Yes. From now thank on, you. very important. This world is perfect. Um, but yeah, thank you so much again for doing this run, especially filling last minute. It was an amazing run. Uh, I'm always happy to get more Kingdom Hearts onto uh, GDQ because all the runs are always super hyped. So yeah, thank you so much again. Uh, that's going to be the end of our show for today. Everybody watching, thank you again so, so much. Tomorrow, make sure you tune in because we will be doing a... I'll, I'll be hosting again, and we're going to do like a six-hour-long Digimon Survive any percent hard speed run, which is... It's also going to be like a new route reveal, so it's it's going to be a lot of wild stuff that you've probably never seen before. And the game itself is very underran, so I'm very excited to see how that turns out. So definitely tune in for that tomorrow. We'll be live uh, starting around the same time, so 1 p.m. Eastern, going for about six hours, so plenty of time there for you to jump in and see what it's all about. And thank you, everyone, for watching again. So uh, we'll see you all next time. Take care.